everybody. Welcome to Sunny King Criterium here in beautiful Anniston, Alabama. My name is Gabe Lloyd, and I'm alongside Daniel Holloway here for the kickoff of our USA Crit season down here in Alabama. We have a great show for all of you guys here today in, in beautiful Anniston, Alabama. We've just completed two of our collegiate races and awarded our championship events. Weather today, blustery, but beautiful and sunny, nearly 80 degrees, and perfect for all of our uh, racers here today. This is the beginning of our USA Crits series, and we are going to be having uh, a full schedule of events for USA Crits. It's kicking off with today's Sunny King Criterium here in Anniston, Alabama, and then getting into our Spartanburg Regional Races and our, and then followed by Athens Orthopedic Clinic Twilight. Highlights and then our Winston Salem Classic finishing on our uh, on the USA Crits Salem. calendar tonight. Kicking off USA Crits, there will be points up for grabs, and tonight will be very special to kick off our USA Crits calendar. There is our calendar, Aniston, with our first race, Spartanburg, South Carolina, here for our second on April 26. On the 27th, Athens, Georgia, for the one and only Athens Orthopedic Clinic Twilight Criterium. And on May 25th, it will round out the championship in Winston-Salem Cycling Classic in Winston-Salem. We're about to kick off our pro women's race. And before we get there, let's take a look back at our 2023 result. And as we're looking at 2023 here, we had a full course full of great women. Rachel Langdon returning this year. The race was amazing, it was fast, it was furious, but we had a big crash early on and it took out mainly Taylor Cook White, who dislocated her finger completely. You see her here in the pits where she is actually putting her finger back in the socket. She gets back on the bike and you'll see here shortly that as she re-enters the race and puts herself back into the mix at the front of the field, keeping the paces high and keeping this race on full tilt. Taylor Taylor Cook White coming through here on the front. And in this race, Daniel, what do you think uh, our dynamic is here from last year? Yeah, she, she did a big part of the lead out for Andrews here in Palo Munoz. And here we see the final, uh, Alexis Ryan leading out her sister, Kendall, um, and Elise Salazar going into the, to the final corner. And this is basically textbook lead out of getting through that corner with speed and momentum and letting Kendall do the, do the launch for Salazar. Uh, then we see Paula Munez um, and then Sarah Van Dam from DNA who ends up on the podium here. Uh, but just well, well executed um, lead out here from, from a small team. So this is what we're going to be looking at as we look at uh, 2024 Sunny King Crit. It's a smaller field, teams of two, three, maybe four riders. So the team that can really execute just like we saw there from the Legion women is going to be the key to success um, as we you know, uh, look forward to the women's race. So Yureli Salazar taking the win last season. Kendall Ryan in the national championship last year. She is back this year, though. And then we will also see uh, some of our other riders on this route, ride, including Shannon Koch, who was 10th last year. This year, she will be back into this mix. Returning to the race this year is going to be 2021 champion Harriet Owen back in Anniston, Alabama. This year she is with DNA Pro Cycling as part of that squad, a small but mighty squad with Rachel Langdon and Kimberly Lucci also in support of Owen. Owen won this race back in 2021 alongside Rachel Langdon and the two of them really did a nice job trying to keep that race nice and animated. Just as Daniel was talking about before, then small field dynamics, a lot of things can change, but we did see a small, fast lead out by our Insta Fund as we saw them coming to the finishing line, landing with the lead out, and Owens able to hold on for the win, and she does the chicken dance as part of a bet that she made with Rachel earlier in the day, and she was able to succeed upon that effort. On the podium here, we see them again, and let's hear from Harriet Owen from today, earlier on when we got a few Ladies bits of insight from her. We hope you guys have enjoyed your day here in beautiful Anniston, Alabama for the 2024 
dogs will love to win, but there's a, still a strong field here, so yeah, we'll see how the race pans. So we'll be looking out for Legion and Goldman Sachs tonight, and then there's a few collegiate riders that will also be handy, so we just need to stay focused and see how the race goes. Right. So my teammates are vital for the sprint, obviously, but we don't want to just sit back and roll around all night, so hopefully we can make it like an aggressive race. And yeah, we this race, we feel quite confident on how to execute a finish like this given results before so we'd look to you know make those critical corners in the last few laps and make it count we're also going to kick off our USA crit series this tonight and we have a number of d1 teams in the house who are ready to fight for those points you can see our jerseys here in front of us including a uh, goldman sachs butcher box is, is here uh and i believe we see our tyler perry studios race in this week as well but these are all of our d1 teams all racing for usa crit championship points and you will see sprints for them at five laps in, mid-race, and then five laps to go. Bonus championship points for USA Crits overall. We're gonna jump over to our call-ups now. Tonight we saw uh, our fast returning riders coming to us. Shannon Koch, a strong regional rider with 11 wins in the past year, including 10th last year. Ali McCraw uh, coming to the mix as well from us from Atlanta, Georgia. She's always in the mix in these larger races. Kendall, and looks like this is our Goldman Sachs representative here for Ali Lacroix, a strong regional rider. She's always in the race and always in the mix. We'll be looking forward to seeing her mixing it up here tonight. Here is uh, Kendall Ryan, I believe. There she is. Yes, Kendall Ryan, former national champion. She is looking to get herself into the top step of tonight. Remember, she was our lead out last year for Yarelli. This year, she will be looking for the ultimate win. Here is Harriet Owen that we just spoke about and heard from in our program, Harriet, our winner in 2021. She has a small program, but so does Legion, and so we'll see how those dynamics play out for us this evening. South Carolina, Debbie Sarah Rains, I believe, is this call up. Sarah coming to us uh, as part of the Velocia Sport NC program. Rains, uh, now part of the Velocia Sport program and that is one of the D1 programs as well. Maria Doring coming to us. She represents Savannah College of Art and Design out of Atlanta, Georgia. Paige Konsinecki now part of the Williams Racing family of Ladies program. She's with Austin Outlaws this year. Paige, always an animator and a fan favorite, will be looking for a Konsinecki attack at some point this evening. And of course, we can't have a Southeast Conference race without Debbie Milne here on the front. We're going to transition ourselves to the uh, national anthem as part of our race proceedings
Mary Culpepper, a local Anniston resident and performing artist doing our national anthem here tonight for the kickoff to USA Crits here at the Sunny King Criterium Pro Women. If you're just joining us, thank you for joining us. My name is Gabe Lloyd. I'm alongside Daniel Holloway here tonight in the booth and on the stage, I should say, for the kickoff to USA Crits. This is our professional women's race. And there they go. Our racing is now underway. And we have ourselves the beginning of the USA Crit season here in Anniston, Alabama. Daniel, what are some of the things we're going to be looking for on the uh, first few laps of tonight's race? Some potential scenarios that we can uh, potentially keep an eye out for. Yeah, it's a, it's a small group tonight, uh, 30, 30 ladies. Uh, racing, um, but there's quite some horsepower in here. Um, and it doesn't really fall off until kind of really the, the bottom of the group. So I think we're going to see a lot of cat and mouse moments where they're going to test each other, but a lot of, I think, just kind of looking um, and, and, yeah, just being really coy tonight until um, some key points. Uh, we're going to see the teams, you know, five laps in, see who's kind of interested in those USA crit points and using that as an opportunity to separate themselves from the field with that momentum you know so we have five laps in halfway point five to go so those are three opportunities to look at um setting the stage for tonight's race but also the u.s secret season and, and so forth on um, where's people's intentions lie as they get through the season and, and kick it off so those are three points then we're gonna see some cash frames who's out here hunting for some money who's out here you know again a, a lot of this first race of the season is going to setting the tone for how the rest of the season plays off and what people's intentions are uh, racing uh, as we move throughout this race through the rest of the year. Yeah, I, the really interesting thing about USA Crits tonight is that not all the teams in here are actually part of D1, and so we may see a situation where some teams will go for that sprint at five laps in, and then other teams will capitalize upon that acceleration to then uh, launch themselves. We're going to take a look at our course here right now and analyze what we are looking at. This course in downtown Anniston, Alabama is deceptively hard because on paper it is pretty straightforward. It is four corners in downtown Anniston, Alabama. But Daniel, talk to us a little bit about the nuances of this course here. Yeah, it's not a traditional, I mean, it, it's four corners, yeah, but it's we have elevation elevation gain from corner four through one and even kind of part part of, you know, into two, it kind of rolls. And then from two to three, it's it kind of rolls, it's flat and it rolls off into a downhill into three. But in today's uh, situation, it's a block headwind. Um, so it makes it, you know, there's no respite, no place to rest if you're at the front of the race. If you're in a breakaway and you want to carry momentum, it's hard from corner four to corner three. So really kind of the only place to somewhat coast, catch your breath is the small road between three and four. Everything else is you're on the pedals to either hold the wheel or to be pushing, pushing the pace. Um, and the, the texture of the road is not perfect. We're not on a racetrack, we're on a city course that's you know always changing month to month, year to year, um, you know, in this, in this part of the world. And as you can see, there's cracks that are, you know, um, seamed up, not, you know, not, covered and so the the road is different you have to pre-ride these course um to look around and find all these unique things on how wide do you take corners how tight do you take corners to make sure you know what is the best way to get around this course if you're in the peloton know when to anticipate a larger bump or a place that you can pop out and, and move up so it's it's not just a simple nice pavement for four corner course it's got all these little things that um you know, the best riders know to look for right, so before they start racing and use it to their advantage. Race of the, year, biggest race of the, year, the elevation start. on this course yes. certainly a deceptive yes. challenge yes. overall, and we're going to keep an eye on how that's going to play oh, out. Way, now, we have a, a beautiful day here in Anniston, there Alabama you know. as well, She's but it's some blustery conditions. We're looking at about Seven 78 points. degrees Fahrenheit. Winds west-northwest at 5 to 10 miles an hour right now, but er, there are gusts that are certainly pulling a little bit stronger than that. It is very sunny though, and it's a beautiful night to come out and spectate and cheer on your fa favorite riders. And of course, this is Sunny King, the sunniest race of them all down here in Anniston, Alabama. Yeah, and I don't believe that wind call. I mean, if we look uh, outside of our booth onto the backstretch, there is a massive, massive flag flown by the local fire department. And with the size of that, 
there's no way only five miles an hour wind is is getting that thing horizontal um so it, it says five to ten but you know I'm, I'm thinking it's more consistently 12 to 15 miles an hour with with some more gusts I agree. So I, we'll see the blustery conditions as they continue to push on. Right now, we have Savannah Collard Bart design with our uh, Maria Doring doing their doing her thing and putting on a nice show. And she's being brought back right now by uh, looks like one of our all in black riders, potentially one of our outlaws, as part of our start sheet that we're seeing here as well. So. Great turnout here tonight. Well, about 30 riders jumping in. One one name I know that was not on our pre-race list, Erica Carney. Right, Erica come. Carney, one of the most savviest racers that we know. Awesome. Uh, she is in the Piedmont Cycling Kit tonight in the green and white. I'm sure we'll be talking about her at some point, but Erica always uh, a consummate winner. She has helped, uh, she helped Ms. Moak back in 2020 maybe 19 even take the win here uh back in the day when they were part of rally cycling uh erica part of the piedmont cycling program she's one of their coaches and so of course she's here in support of them she decided to jump into this race this evening so we'll keep an eye on whether or not mrs carney a new mother and uh, also finishing up her graduate studies is going to uh, factor into the final. So, yeah, right now, those are yeah, I mean, she's definitely a savvy rider, national champion. She's yeah, it's, it's been there, race, done that, seen it all. And so I, I expect her yeah, to just play coy, be patient, not spend more energy than she has to. Um, I, I anticipate her maybe to have a look at a preem or two, just to test her legs and get the timing back um, a little bit. But, uh, you know, we're definitely going to see her in the, in the finish of the sprint um, for sure. Um, all right, so... Another notable thing to, to call series. out is with the two Every Williams Racing Video teams, to uh, go with the Legion points. ladies and the Ten, Outlaws, seven, five, um, three, they're wearing the well, Osso's kits, uh, the Legion the gals are going to be wearing so blue helmets, and they've got the white and black on their left sleeve, whereas the Outlaws are going to be wearing a different color helmet, I believe they're gray, and their left sleeve is going to be a black and gray with maybe a purple zipper, so... Um, they look very, very similar. Um, and then you also have Kingdom Elite Racing also wearing an all-black jersey. They're going to be on the Pinarello Dogma um, with a cask helmet. All right, very cool. So some great setups here by our in our professional women's field as we start to get ourselves in a way for our races here this evening. And here comes our first USA Crits points frame. First USA Crits points frame. Points are on the line. I think it's 10, 7, 5, 3, 2, 1, I believe, if I, from our race technical guy. Let's see who's going to go for this frame. Looks like our uh, Goldman Sachs EFT program are going to be at the front for the moment. And Erica Carney also right there in second position. Sunny King Crit Sprint Lap. USA Crit's points on the line. Now, we were talking to uh, the DNA program earlier today at the coffee shop, right, again, and they were points. talking Six, about how the counter to this race, to, uh, to this sprint, may six, offer six, an opportunity to sort of separate the field. But I think what they were talking about is sort of an acceleration and jumping I mean, off of speed, Garrett, right? It's better to jump from a fast race than from a slow race in order to get that gap. Uh, so we may see a difference than what they forecast. You see on the left side of our screen and the white Osso uh, shoulders there with the blue helmets are the Legion of Los Angeles sisters, Kendall Ryan and Alexis Magner. We'll see if they go for anything, but also if they're going to pay attention to any potential counterattacks, Kim Lucci there for DNA for a cycling oh, yeah, with the tattoos on the front. The Debbie Milne Here's right there. It looks like Debbie the in second position to going to be looking for uh, some opportunity to get herself some again, points. Remember, there's no cash on the sprint. line. No cash here. Again, Just Debbie points. So Debbie, Debbie Milne really potentially going to go for this. Let's see what happens here. Out. Jumping out of four. And here's the acceleration by Debbie. She's out of the saddle. She's the only one. And here comes somebody else from Savannah College of Art and Design up on the oh, right man, side of the screen. Debbie Milne right having a Mark Cavendish mechanical there, unable to stay and in the big chain ring. And so Milne uh, uh, moved from the sprint contention, Savannah College of Art and Design. And it is right, so actually Self Fetty, uh, the EF. 
ETF Goldman Sachs program getting themselves that sprint on the line. And we'll try to get that identification here as soon as we can. And we have yep, Kim Lucci as they discussed. And here we go. We are going through the sprint. Ooh, rewind sprint just for good measure. And there it is. Uh, we're going to see Goldman Sachs so DX the taking the sprint just ahead of Savannah College of Art and Design. Yetta has got seven. Debbie has, I'm not exactly sure where she finished. And by the way, we're back to racing right far now far as we see a little bit of a separation here After with DNA Pro Cycling. So this is what we had talked about at the coffee shop earlier, just sort of trying to keep the pace high after an acceleration from the sprint. Kim Lucci on the front, I believe, right now. And with Alexis Magner right on the wheel. Field of, as strung out as we've seen it so far this evening. And Kim on the front with the, I believe that's Alexis right behind. Let's see where third wheel is here. With the setting sun here, at it's that sort of backlit effect. It's tough to see. Just straight after Debbie. It's going to be Kimberly Lucy. Then after her is Alexis Ryan. Up near the front of Anna College of Art and Design. Tatiana Gomez may be one to watch here. Tatiana uh, having already raced in the collegiate races, but it is Debbie Milne on the front. So it goes with Kim Milne, Lucy, Ryan. Alexis Magner, Excuse recently me. married to Magner Ty Magner now. this week. So Congratulations Ty. to those two. Alexis Excuse is Kendall this Ryan's is sister. Ty Magner. Nice to see them all coming over from Athens today to join us here in, in Athens, Aniston, Georgia, Alabama. A short uh, two hour oh, drive. Oh, oh, yeah. Kendall and Alexis have each one Athens orthopedic Twilight Criterion. Am I right I'm on that? Uh, Kendall for sure. She did it solo. And Alexis um, last year, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. There we go. They've each got that crown. It's pretty cool. We'll see if they can defend that in uh, this year's edition as it's part of USA Crits. All right, looks like Scott is now taking themselves to the front. Turn number four coming up. So far, it's stayed together except for the point break. Again, we have two more sprints, and then the final sprint at the end. Sarah Reyes from Velocis out of Winston-Salem. Poking up on the left-hand side. Sarah's been racing her bike for a very long time, living out of Winston-Salem. And this right, looks like going. we're gonna Shane have uh, we're gonna take a look at our points breakdown for USA crits coming so up. Points are Alexis Ryan was to uh, oh, gonna be awarded here for the USA crits series. With that Very said, though, we have rider. looks like Shannon Coke from uh, the Kingdom program is gonna be the one to attack here. If nothing else, she's causing a massive perturbation. On an earthquake scale, this is probably a three, but hey, look, you have multiple earthquakes. It's bound so to crack Ms. the Coke foundation. There on the front, taking a look over the shoulder. Kendall. And I think Alexis may right, try to shut it down. Up. Here's our points for USA Chris, where all sister. riders will get 50 points for starting. Kendall, if you lead a lap, you will get one point. And then for the sprint laps, there's no sprint jersey. These sprints are actually for the overall GC, which we think is great. It allows some riders to change their overall standings. Points are awarded 10, 7, 5, 3, and 2. And then points on the finish, capitalizing at 200 points for the winner. And then there are increments down from the bottom. But remember, everybody gets at least 50 points for even being here today. This is Rachel Langdon on the front right now, trying to lift the tempo up a little bit just to try to keep the pace moving. That does benefit Harriet Owen, who is their final sprinter. But you can see a little bit of an acceleration here on the 
Uh, road, right side of the road, that's Kim Lucci countering the move, and Alexis Magner is the one chasing there. So Lucci and Magner connected. That is your velocious sport riders. Uh, trying to bring that back from the field. Sarah Rains is part of that program. This is Kim, Lucy, and Alexis Magna on the, the front. Now, what are we looking at, Daniel? Is this, what kind of effort are we doing, and why are we doing this effort? Yeah, Kim's just trying to up the pace. She's, you know, um, pulling out teams that see you that want to chase. You know, I'd really like to see Alexis participate, even though chances are she's not. Um, yeah. I think it would just be, it, it would help Kendall even more if she went out there um, and, and forced more of the other teams to chase. You know, it, I get sitting on, right, not letting like anything get so anywhere, but you're also not asking it's anybody else to work with who's back that easy. If right. right. Alexis puts in some effort here and extends the gap 15, 20 seconds, it forces other teams um, to, to chase and get tired. So as we looked at the end of the race, her doing it, the, the lead out, the right, means she's going against more yeah, tired people. When she just sits on and it comes back easy, you know, the, the so efforts aren't Lucy's that big, and the, the, left out, the lead out becomes more challenging because it, people yeah, aren't quite as tired. We're also seeing these attacks come on the hill, which in theory makes sense, but it's also the tailwind section. Would it make more sense to attack on the downhill headwind? Um, does it not matter? Kick counter attack and would be really good there. The um, again, like we were talking about in the collegiate races, um, was, was very much we have to start thinking about longer efforts, right? 30 second attack is is good, it's explosive, it, it definitely draws some fatigue, but in terms of creating gaps and true separation, it, it's not really going to do anything. We've got to start looking at, again, going all out for 90 seconds, three minutes, um, you know, that, that amount of time consistently to really um, put, some, put some gaps in, in, the, in the field. Um, right. and, and they need to, if you're looking to counterattack, you need, can't wait for it to fully slow down. You have to time it so you're, a, you're attacking at the highest speed while everybody else is slowing down. That's to your best advantage. It's not to wait till it goes slow and you have to do uh, a massive effort to get back up to speed and, and going fast to, to grow your gap. So. Waiting too long is, is not advantageous okay. uh, in, in a counterattack. Well, let's see how these things shake out here in the front of the field as we see our field start to come through. I believe that is going to be Tatiana Duenas Gomez from Columbia, uh, a student at the Savannah College of Art and Design. Okay, we've got see them the uh, mixing it up. They all just did the collegiate A race black, just uh, yellow, uh, about an hour or two ago. So getting plenty of course time in today. In this nearly 80 degree day, uh, they need to stay on top of nutrition and hydration and all that good stuff, right? Yeah, the this, this duration, if you have right good right pre-race nutrition and um, all of that, you're not too worried about needing um, yeah, sugars and gels um, in that hour, hour time window. Um, maybe so for some people, depending on their metabolism and, and use case, could use a gel, you know, a, a small hit of carbohydrates halfway through, but it would mostly be, you know, water and hydration is going to be play a bigger factor um, for this type of uh, race and its length. So Valentina Hernandez uh, jumping away. Keep it in the family, and that's what the Hernandez's do. You know, I think, you know, looking at this field makeup, the smaller teams here that have, you know, kind of the larger squad, Kingdom Elite, Goldman Sachs, maybe when you get to, to full Pelotons and full size, they, they aren't full players. I'd like to see them go out on a limb, take kind of a big risk, put themselves in the in the driver's seats and, and really race uh, a like a really big team and see where it gets them, test, test really themselves a little bit instead of being a little passive and a little coy saying, oh, we know. We know what the last lap is going to look like in the stage of field sprint, right? It's going to be DNA happening. versus Legion in, in the lead out. And waiting for that to happen, we, to on average, we can look back at pace results, like what's the outcome there? We know what, we know how that's going to shake out. Yeah. What we don't know how it's going to shake out is if you're super aggressive for 60 minutes with your program. We don't know what it looks like if you really put pressure on the whole race. You're not testing yourself in the field. Maybe you can crack a code, learn something new on how to explore in, the, in future races. So 
for these smaller programs, I think they need to go out and take a li take a risk, because if they pull it down to a field sprint, like really, what are their odds um, against Kendall so Ryan and Harry right. Owen? You know? Yeah, one of the best field sprinters in the sport. Yeah, absolutely. So I think they do need to try something a little different for themselves uh, to, to see what can happen, build some confidence. In, and all of that. Okay. Got we're just seeing Kingdom here, here, but we're just seeing these accelerations on the front, and everybody's able just to latch onto the wheel. Uh, so it's not really like what we saw in that collegiate a men's A race, where it sort of cut across the road, right up the fence, and create these gaps, whatnot. It's just these um, sort of tempo accelerations. So we'll we'll see if somebody starts to snap the elastic a little bit and uh, really take the you know test things out. I totally agree with you as far as. This is the first race of the year. You've got one of the best field sprinters in the country, if not the sport, um, in this race with Kendall Ryan being led out by her sister Alexis. And, and, and then you also have Harriet Owen, this former winner of this race. Harriet serve. is in this event. So right the odds are stacked against you as far as field sprints are concerned. So you might as well try something. I, but we'll see. We'll see what, if we, uh, what else is going to happen out here today. Yeah, and if you're sending teammates to, to do an attack, you need to make sure that your another teammate is very close to that to counterattack, and another teammate is there to counterattack, and you know work together as a unit instead of putting one at the front and three teammates at the back of the field. They've got so much room to to make up, to make uh, a fruitful counterattack, to make use of energy, right? Like we're trying to be efficient with energy, whether that's going hard for a, a long period of time or, or saving. Like efficiency works both ways. Brittany Parfrey on the front for Savannah College of Art and Design briefly through turn number four. Erica Carney there in the Piedmont cycling. Nice to see these collegiate jerseys represented in the pro women's race. Carney again, gonna always keep herself in a protected position. Come up, we'll see. We are fence to fence here at the moment, though it looks like we have an acceleration here on the left side of the screen, and that's gonna be another Kingdom Elite rider for us. We'll try to get a number here f as they make the turn. Not. A little bit of a gap. A kingdom so far in the past two laps have been put themselves on the front with different riders. Shannon Coke was their call up rider for Kingdom Elite. Gabriella Dixon also in this race. All right, so Madeline Wayman, rider number 177 for Kingdom Elite. Team is based out of Florida. We have a different view. Nobody willing to pull through, though. Everybody content to allow the pace to settle. And these can end up being really hard races when it's, you know, full gas, full rest, full gas, full rest. So, it, you know, we can see when it, it spreads out and, and it gets wide, like the perceptions, you know, like we are, they're going speed-wise slow. But if they keep just doing these on-off efforts, you know, if you've ever done 30-30s, like, Typically, you can do those for 10 minutes before you're like, I've had enough. And so this race is, you know, an hour long. So it's like, how, who can kind of do these on-off efforts, you know, for an hour and, and still be successful? So we kind of see how that kind of plays out and how it wears on people as, as time goes on. If you're just joining us, welcome to the Signing King Criterium here in Anniston, Alabama. My name is Gabe Lloyd, and I'm joined by uh, Daniel Holloway, part of the Call Up podcast. So if you've joined us on that, you are hearing us call it like it is live here today in Anniston, Alabama. Big thanks to the crew for putting on such a great event here and having us as part of the production. Valentina Hernandez, one more time for Kingdom Elite Racing in the all black with the white helmet, accelerating on the front. This is the first USA Crit race of the season. USA Crits returning this year with a nice tight schedule geographically all in the Southeast. We think that's a great way to uh, to get a for early season series back underway so that the riders can drive from race to race. It's nice and tight on the calendar as well. So after here in Anniston, they're gonna jump over to Speed Week and then that which will include the Athens Orthopedic Twilight Criterium, one of our country's favorite races. And then they'll conclude the series uh, in Winston-Salem in May 25th. Here we are tonight, though, on April 13th with Anniston, Alabama at the Sunny King Criterium, one of our country's longest standing criteriums as well. Big thanks to Sunny King Automotive Dealerships for your continued support of bike racing here in the Model City. Super powerful in for the long ride. 
Looking at Shannon Coke for Kingdom Elite Racing. Shannon was the call up for her team. All Racing on those nice Pinarellas. Like to see it, love to see it. Look at that. Are they on Also's kit too? The Pedal Mafia. Oh. You need to get them on brand. So we're starting to get a bevy of activity in the front. There's Code. Neca. Owen. Ryan. All right, so Code coming through. Jet Elkin, Harriet Owen, Valentina Hernandez. Your top four through the start finish line. And we have seen some single file at racing styles here at the moment. But we are also seeing riders even just in seventh wheel looking backwards to see what's going on behind them. So we're going to need to see the pace continue to be pushed. But we are seeing the attentive uh, prowess there of your Legion of Los Angeles riders this season and the Osos kit with the blue Giro helmet. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on the Ryan sisters, whether that's going to be Kendall Ryan or Alexis Magner. You can see them just in the corner there of the drone shot on the head-on shot on your top right of your screen. Shannon Koch driving the pace. This will be the second lap that she has been on the front for the field. Right behind her with Savannah College of Art and Design is Jet Alkin. And then in third wheel there with the white kit and pink accents, Harriet Owen. Former winner of this event, Harriet, taking the win in 2021 when she was on the InstaFund cycling program. Yeah, so Shannon has just done this big effort, and she needs her teammates to, to counter take, keep that pace up, and get into those, like I was saying earlier, that, that three minute, you know, five minute window pace of when fatigue really starts to set in, gaps can open and right, actually stabilize. DNA Pro Cycling trying to shake this up. And here we go. DNA on the front right now. Kim Lucy pushing the tempo here. Now we are single file down to about 12th wheel. You start to see this elastic stretch a bit. You're going to start really see where the uh, top riders are going to find themselves into the overall so hierarchy. Savannah College of Art and Design, though, definitely keeping themselves into the mix. And Kim Lucy. On the front, checking the shoulder. Now, Kim, Kimberly knows that she's not going to do a big, big effort here. A real advantage to doing that. And as she swings left, and the field goes downhill, but into that block headwind. Now, as we were talking about in the collegiate races, those uh, men and women were dealing with the ferocity of the gusty Alabama winds. But our flag is now drooping. Our flag is now showing us on the back straight on Noble Street here that the winds are starting to die down. Now, with the winds dying down a bit, does that change our dynamic from this strategy in any way? Yeah, it just means that as you come around corner two into the downhill, you can carry momentum, right? That block headwind's not stifling um, any speed that was taken between one and two or any effort that was you know, put into the race. So um, it definitely helps you carry momentum, uh, keep the speed high if you're in a breakaway. And, um, a little bit of opportunity to rest as the, as the road goes down. You're able to keep speed right, and coast instead riders. of having to pedal super hard to stay Dixie at the same riders, speed to, to maintain your gap. It's, it's really what that's going to help help out the most. Um, and then getting rid of the tailwind of the climb, it's actually going to help those guys that can't climb as well. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it, it just slows it down just just a little bit there um, as, as the wind dies down and goes on. And so now we're looking at the midway sprint here. Wow, with that, yeah, halfway through this race already. Time flies. 28 minutes in, we're ringing that halfway bell. This is USA Crits points only. So only points are on the line. Uh, this, so this is the second preem of the race. There have been no cash preems quite yet. We'll need to get the crowd involved. Throw me 20 bucks for that one. But on the front, let's see who's going to go for the points sprints here. Looks like Kingdom Elite Racing is going to go give it a go. They are part of the D1. Madeline Wayman for Kingdom Elite Racing. Driving for it, we're going to be looking at 10, 7, 5, 3, and 2 points awarded on this lap. This is for the overall standing. So if uh, a rider crosses the line first tonight. They'll get 200 points, and then they will add in any of these mid-race preem points 
in addition to that. So you may see a shift in the USA Crit standings at the end of the night. Erica Carney uh, in third wheel nice. there. She may be ending up on the front a little earlier than she wanted. She's drifting back a bit. She's trying to hold the wheel there of Debbie Milne. Milne now jumping into four. Interesting, let's see if she keeps that chain on the bike. Milne getting the gap as she comes out of turn number four. Looking through the legs, nobody chasing. I think people thought that Carney was gonna chase there or not. Debbie Milne, crit savvy here, showing through and through. She's the current 50 to 54 Masters National Champion. And she's also uh, always a crit savant. She's done a few of our races up in the Northeast even in the past few years. But here we come, and we're running out of road. She holds it. Milne holds on just ahead of Izzy Harden of Atlanta Rise. And so Milne will take 10 maximum uh, USA crits points for that effort. Harden will go back to the scoreboard with seven points for that sprint. After that, I no idea. Yeah, we could see there, Milne got that by the half a bike length going from the corner, and that was a very risky move. Again, it's a long, long spread, even with the tailwind from corner four, four to the line. So um, riders like Erica are going to be, you know, watching that. That's why she places herself third wheel going into that, even though she's not sprinting. Is just see how it plays out, see where people start to fade, start make ground to, to figure out timing. Um, Ali LaCroix third in the sprint, Rachel Langdon fourth, and Jet Elkin in fifth. So Debbie Milne, Izzy Harden, Ali LaCroix, Rachel Langdon, and Jet Elkin. The top five, all of them coming away with points for USA Crit standings. Now we're seeing a counter from this move from Atlanta Rise, followed there by Rachel Langdon of DMA. We are coming back together, though, even though we are about single file. Just over 31 minutes of race time now. That is Rachel Langdon on the front as the sun sets behind. And here we have confirmation that no Izzy Harden and Ali LaCroix are going to be the top three of that sprint. And in fourth is Rachel Langdon. And in fifth, Jet Elkin. Those top five will get themselves points for the USA Crit Series. And Kingdom Elite, Kingdom Elite now hitting Hall out with Shannon Hall Coke. So Coke hitting one more time. Nice to see Kingdom Elite be nice and aggressive here uh, through and through. And paying attention to that is going to be uh, probably Kim. Right yeah, looks behind. Like Shannon Coke, Kim. Yeah, it's Shannon Coke, Kim. And then, oh, we got somebody in the pits. Savannah College of Art and Design, maybe. Getting a new rear wheel. Pit cam. All right, so we have one rider from SCAD that's in the pit. What that means Coke is on the front. Uh, looks like maybe Rachel pit, right behind. The and you're going to be looking at. Maybe Sarah Rain there in third wheel. But we'll see what the shift becomes. Feels staying together. Single file, though. Criterium Racing, you're going to see this rider get a free lap as they get themselves sorted, and then they will get pushed back into the race here, just past the start-finish line. Coke still on the front, now lifting the tempo on the right, hill. Field still staying really right on the wheel. Shannon apart. Coke wagging the tail of the dog, as we would say, just trying to whip the field back and forth. So Looks like Gabrielle Leonard from Savannah College of Art and Design in the pit, the pit the for race. the moment. She's still getting herself sorted, which is okay. She's allowed to get a few laps in the pit before she sorts herself out. Coke has done her effort. She is done okay, with she that Coke acceleration. But yeah, we really need to see, you know, Rachel Langdon, Kim Lucci, you know, Atlanta Rise, some of the other teams counter, keep this momentum going um, to see if there's, you know, the elastic can't break. Again, when it's just it one person do these things, it's, it's kind right of all here. for naught. It's not really progressing um, to, to anything moving forward. Um, it's interesting to not see Paige Kosinecki 
you know, uh, she's at the front here, but not putting on any kind of pace, just putting herself in placement. So yeah. some of these other teams can be, you know, completely capable of being more active. And um, it's, again, I don't think it's advantageous to want to wait around and go head head to head with Kendall Ryan no <laughs> or Harriet Owen you know, the, so the the easily the best sprinters in the country and you know would have a a fight at the world tour level as well yeah you gotta you gotta know which cards you're dealt in a race right and to see what your odds are and try to stack the odds in your favor as best you can in any given moment and sometimes that means you have to take a different tactic than uh, what you would normally do at a, a local race, right? Local races are going to be different than these uh, regional slash national level events. So we'll see what happens, though, as we start to move through. But now Kostanecki uh, no longer in first position as we see the Kingdom Elite team one more time taking over at the front. We are seeing Audrey Drummond from the Wait, Goldman Sachs ETFs program getting himself, herself back. there. And Debbie Milne also now putting herself up into the mix up near the front. What do you think okay, Debbie's thinking? Like Why is Debbie up. fighting for wheels right now with uh, 35 minutes in? I uh, just kind of maintain placement. Um, sometimes you do have to be, you know, um, a calculated aggressive no, in, in certain times and in, in positions to, you know, depending on the rider, just say, hey, I'm not going to be easily pushed off a wheel. You know, I'm going to, you know, fight a little bit and, you know, put out a, a respectable elbow. So. You kind of set the tone that way when you get into five to go, three to go, one to go. You know, somebody knows, ooh, I'm riding next to Debbie, and she's not really, she's going to put up a fight, right? I'm, that's not what I want to be a part of. Um, so. Interesting. We have a little gap here. Yeah, they just need to work. You know, it's nobody's checking their shoulder fully to see what's kind of going on. Um, but, yeah, there was, the, uh, again, there's these moments, they're quick, and if you can be on top of it and aware, you could take advantage of them. But if you just aren't checking your surroundings, you know, you miss an opportunity to either make some teams work really hard or an opportunity to actually create a successful breakaway. Well, with uh, the women coasting on the downhill, we're going to be putting ourselves through the uh, paces here starting to wind ourselves into the final third of the race this is going to be a uh, sarah rain i believe on the front reins excuse me so of velocious sports they are one of the d1 programs you can always tell where they are with their rubber duckies on their shoulders and behind is, uh, is actually Rachel, but now Kim Lucci going to attack from midfield back. Nice move here by Kim. Let's see if anybody will follow. That would be advantageous for her to work with if she can actually get herself a split. Kim with a little bit of daylight, but the whole field is there. And it is Alexis Magner that is going to respond in kind. Unfortunately, Alexis is actually dragging the rest of the field right to the wheel. So Magner knows that she can't let Kim just go. Uh, but unfortunately, Magner's acceleration just drawing out uh, at least the whole start finish. Now, look at that little sort of the inverse oh, okay. assistance there by Rachel Langdon by dropping anchor through turn well, one there a little bit. That creates a little bit of a gap there for Lucci, Magner, and uh, Reigns, I believe, is also up there. Yeah, it's not just, you know, Rachel's not pulling the brakes, she's just not pedaling. Yeah. You know, and so when. The group in front of you is, is pedaling away and, and you start coasting. It, it allows that gap to, to open in more of a natural kind of way. And you could you could do that. And, you know, it's not it's the job behind you with the people to keep their eyes up, yep. you know. And um, again, when you just coast, you're not on your brakes. You're not pulling anchors, right? You're just not accelerating with the people in front of you. So as, as fatigue sets in, it's these little micro opportunities to create gaps for your teammates that by the time somebody that's fatigued looks up and goes, oh, man, there's 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 a gap, I gotta go chase it. And you're making people work if they're not willing to attack or rotate in a breakaway. It's just another it's another form um, in technique to get other people in the race to, to work if they're not gonna really go to the front of the race. Yeah, yeah, and definitely uh, didn't mean for my statement to imply that Rachel had grabbed a fistful of brake, right? It was definitely just an easing of the pressure on the pedals as she's coming through turn one. It is also a slight uphill, right? So it's just easy to gap a wheel without being dangerous. Never be dangerous. Always be subtle. Always be nuanced in your efforts here at this level of racing. Let's see what we got here. 
It's going to be uh, Luisa Para. So Luisa Para for Kingdom Elite Racing on the front right now. Para drawing out SCAD, DNA, Atlanta Rise, and uh, Piedmont Cycling with Erica Carney. So Field still together, though, right? The elastic is not yet snapped. Yeah, and I mean, you can see that Kingdom Elite, when they do go to the front, it, it stretches out. What they're missing is their ability to do it, you know, back to back to back, you know, with the riders I they have. It's this big attack, and then the yeah, other yeah. riders out of that team are seemingly you know, out of placement, out of, out of order, not That's close enough to make line. use to counterattack. It's this rider goes hard, it stretches out, and then all her teammates are in the back, so when it slows down, it takes way too long for the counterattack to happen for the program. So they're trying, it, it just, they're not quite working out to get the full effect of what that team, you know, seemingly quite strong. They're just not having as big as impact they could be having with riders out of position. Yeah, it takes a lot of uh, nuance of team dynamics right now to figure this out now for DNA Pro Cycling. Kim Lucci coming across the front to sort of relieve Rachel Langan of the onus of having to take pedal strokes. Now you're seeing the Ryan sisters linking up with about a little less than 20 minutes of racing to go. Alexis Magner, first wheel, and Kendall Ryan behind her. We haven't really talked about Kendall at all throughout the program, which is good, right? Like, we don't want to be talking about Kendall or Harriet very much at all. We want, they want to be preserving themselves, being invisible, having everybody else forget about them. We have been talking about Debbie Mill. What was that? That was a sprint for a point? Yeah, because they're also within the USA Crits has the um, you know lap leader competition ah, right lap that, competition. that goes um, throughout the US Secret Series. So okay. um, get a couple of these micro races within a race that can uh, create some action and some, some tension. So maybe those two riders are paying attention to it and know that right. you know she has four, I have four, I want to get one ahead. King of Elite going one more time. And that, my friends, is what exactly happened during the team meeting. It's about 40 minutes, okay, and I'm now seeing nine start. laps to go on the counter. Nine oh, right. laps remaining on the counter at this time. So we start to see some lead out setups starting to occur. It's really, you know, kind of tricky for to pace yourself when you just see the lap count at under 10. <laughs> Uh, but that seems to be how we've been scoring throughout the day, which so everybody's used to it. This is Gabriella Dixon for Kingdom Elite Racing. Dixon off the front right now by herself, perhaps playing into what most of this field seems to want a sprint situation. Dixon now with the largest gap that we've seen throughout the entire Whoa. evening for our pro women's Who's race. We're in about probably seven-ish seconds. We haven't really counted that out though. And then sure the chase is now on by DNA this Pro Cycling by Kim. And I, don't like, I don't like I don't like that Kim's come was the first team to come. Yeah. I think they need to, to, to be a little more patient and either force really well, see how legion feels first. about it because yeah. they only have two riders uh -huh. you know and if, if legion really wants to win they've got to put some skin in the game um and some of the other teams is you know uh, with dna really come be the first team so fast to come it really plays their hand you know too fast they don't really get to force any any other teams any other riders on what their um temperature for the situation is and, uh, and so i think they play their hand a little too early and a little bit of this like three minute stuff we were talking about in the collegiate races as well, right? Where we're thinking about, okay, watch the gap. If the gap stays the same and my effort has stayed the same, then this is a non-threat. Gap goes up, then I need to increase. If the gap goes down, obviously neutralize. Don't worry about it in any way, shape or form. So, you know, you'd hope that, that these programs would understand that as we've already brought back Dixon pretty handily. So perhaps in an ill-used effort there by DNA Pro Cycling. Hopefully it will not affect their lead out train. We are only looking at about well, nine laps to go. We're looking at 90 second laps. So getting ourselves in about 10, 13 minutes, 13 minutes of racing. Nice to see uh, Audrey Drummond of Goldman Sachs ETF program up near the front. They're gonna see eight laps They've also been extremely through. quiet for three or four riders. That's about 
They really haven't done any of the pulling on the front. Yeah. Hopefully they're going to organize and ride for one rider. Yeah, and I mean, it is, so the, as time goes on, and it's three riders that haven't done anything in the race, right? They, the pressure and the expectation is like, okay, they're, they're going to do a lead out. And that just means the execution has to be perfect for maximum success. So that's the pressure that they're now putting on themselves is that those three riders now have to do everything perfect to line themselves up for, you know, the win. You know, they haven't tried anything in the first 30 minutes to see if something different could happen. They never even tried. So they've really put all their, you know, showed that they're putting all their cards into that field sprint and that they can get it perfect. And it's getting it, again, perfect against a DNA program and a, and a you know, a Legion program. You know, it's, it's sight to be seen. Yeah, I agree. And But we do we give credit to Kingdom Racing for repeatedly attacking up through the start finish? Um, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You know, I understand the, the ideology of, of attacking on a hill, right? It's definitely a place you want to attack. But, you know, and that's that's fine because they string it out. The gaps do open. The, the problem they have is, again, they don't have a teammate backing up for a counterattack, right, to really make use uh, of the effort that into the tail end, which is super hard. You know, so one team can get the field up to maximum speed and then basically pull off and slow down and you know pull the speed back while the teammate that's fifth sixth seventh eighth wheel can carry all that momentum into that headwind while the front of the race is, is lulling right mm -hmm. and that's just a step that they're they're missing yeah, clearly sorry. strong you know clearly have a tactic that they are employing they're just not maximizing it um throughout the whole team. Yeah, very close to success, but maybe uh, rest of speed week, they'll figure those nuances out. Here though, so that was an interesting move as a counter by Kingdom, but it was almost too far back because the rest of the whole field could see it. Now they're just right on it. Yep, yep, exactly. They, they didn't allow the, some Set passive momentum to come backwards and, you know, carry forward. She That's didn't She didn't wait for the, the, the pace to come off at the front before doing that counter attack. And it's a fine line. It's 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 hard to read and get ex exactly right. But so what's happening here? We're looking at seven laps to go, and now everyone's sort of resetting almost, or not sort of maintaining the aggressive pace setting that we were uh, looking at earlier in the race. And this is perfect for Kendall, perfect for Harriet. It gives them that sort of reset opportunity, right? As we see this, all the riders sort of stretch across the field. Lead outs get a rest. You know, right? Am I? Understanding that? No, no, you're reading it well. I mean, and this is, you know, if we went go full replay on, on the whole race, what we can see is that there's the couple of attacks and then the biggest of lulls, the, you know, the, the slowest parts of the race is, you know, teams need to read this, riders need to read this as the, um, is the, you know, is the actual biggest opportunity for, you know, a very strategic counter counterattack. So we're looking at about six across the field right now. Oh. We're going to have to see when these lifts are. I mean, I'm assuming the lift for the lead outs is not going to occur till two to go. Intentionally. That, that's early with team sizes. Even that's early? Yeah, I mean, when you have three riders, right? One's your sprinter, so you have two athletes to do uh, yeah. to do the time period, right? And if we're looking at 90 seconds, it's going to be a little faster. So it's 120, so. You know, two athletes have to do 40 seconds, Heading you know, 35 seconds. Yeah. You know, that's about the window of time, right? All so right, if we back that out, that's, you know, a lap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You know, if you have that little of, of firepower, right? And so. So really it's like turn two? For the biggest of teams. Right. right? And everybody Again, else, they're jumping out of three, maybe? Yeah, I mean, or I, even I think we're going to see, four? depending on the full lap and a half to go, and, you know, I, I'm looking at Alexis to bring Kendall through the final corner li like we saw in the pre-race show. Yeah. You know, that's is, that's as early as, as they want to go. Okay. You know, same thing with DNA, right? They have one more rider that with Kim, but she has a little more fatigue in her legs. So still, they want to be, Kim's going to be going halfway down the back stretch okay. into the final corners to drop Rachel off, right? So she can launch Harriet through the final corner and, you know, 30, 40% away up the up the home stretch. 
We're looking at a sprint lap here for USA Crits. We're gonna award points for the five laps to go. Crossing 10 points for the winner, seven for second, five for third, three for fourth, and two for fifth. So the top five will get themselves points. Looks like Atlanta Rise here is with Ruth Allen. Looking for the best uh, possible points allocation. It's so Ruth Allen coming through here. She's looking very good. And she will collect herself 10 maximum points for her effort. And that'll put Atlanta Rise into the mix for USA Crits in one way, shape, or form. Remember, these points are for the overall GC. There's no sprint jersey for this series. There is only the overall. So these 10 points that she is about to collect will be contributed to her, towards her overall GC standings in the USA Crits series. Behind her, Debbie Milne looks like she's trying to collect the seven. We'll see if she gets challenged. She will not. So Milne collecting seven, Erica Carney will collect third place. Rachel Langdon collecting points again, just simply by patrolling and the Goldman Sachs ETFs program going to collect fifth place points. So we're now looking at five laps remaining in the overall. Five laps to go, and look at this. Ruth Allen kicking herself off the front. And do you th what's going to happen here? Yeah, she's she's got to go all in. She's fully committed to this. Um, and, and, yeah, just has to, you know, kind of commit to that. Okay, it's, it's five minutes. Um, and she's just got to hope that, you know, there's a little more cat and mouse in the, in the back of the field with, uh, you know, some of the teams. And... You you know, kind of trust, you know, and she may not have this perspective, but knowing that, again, Legion is probably, it's too early for them to, like, fully activate. It's a little too early for DNA to fully activate. Um, and so she has, has a moment that it's, again, kind of going to be these ones and twosies to maybe push the, the pace um, a little bit, and that's what kind of these bigger teams are hoping for. So she she does have a chance here, kind of some things fall in the, fall in the right direction. Yeah. Um, but it's got to be an all-in commitment at this point and not get di get distracted by, by anything. It's just head down, everything I got, um, and kind of hope some luck and some tactics on the back end uh, go go her way. No hesitation here by Ruth Allen and Kim Lucci now on the front lifting the tempo. Erica Carney on the wheel. Interesting for Erica to be that far up. Oh, but we got a flat tire here for, I believe that's Allie LaCroix. Uh, she would just gotten herself some points in that last intermediate sprint. I believe that's the Ali LaCroix for Team Goldman Sachs ETFs. Uh, she'd be rider number 160, Ali LaCroix. There she is. Yeah, that is Ali LaCroix, number 160 for Team Goldman Sachs. Unfortunate turn of events, but she did get herself points tonight uh, for the uh, for her efforts a few times in these intermediate sprints. So she will not be completely out of. Uh, she'll be she'll not be where she wants to be and not realizing her potential in her final points standings uh, But anyways here we're looking at kingdom elite racing on the front one more time sharing the workload with DNA pro cycling Legion of Los Angeles not doing any work. We're not seeing Alexis anywhere near the front yet. We are not seeing uh, We're not seeing Kendall Ryan anywhere near the front. They are Oh man, I don't even see them in the shot, um, but they're there. All right, they're comfortable. They have racing this perfectly. You're going to see uh, Ruth Allen get caught here on this uphill stretch into what will be three to go. So as they come across, they will now, when they hit that line, it will become three laps remaining. Three to go for our professional women's race to kick off USA Crit series of events in 2024. It is still not too late for uh, you know Shannon Cook to counterattack this move because it's still too early for these small teams to commit to a full full lead out to bring it back and so 
there's there's still an outside chance for somebody to do a long attack is you know none of the big teams have enough horsepower to go back and it's too far out for you know individual riders to want to help the chase to carry some momentum so kingdom elite really needs to be on their toes and and be in a position to counterattack this if they're going to have any kind of you know big chance to take well, uh, a surprise w just uh, to be fair that wouldn't it also be prudent for like golden Sachs to counter this or yeah like anybody Audrey, anybody racing yep. against kendall right yeah yep, totally totally so yeah so here's the catch madeline wyman doing a ton of work here for kingdom elite racing what's the counter is there a counter we're going to be coming in about two and a half laps to go now for this race and it looks like dna is going to try to set themselves up for a traditional finish in a way, so they're putting their cards on Harriet Owen, and you can see Harriet sort of tucked in behind Legion of Los Angeles on your screen here. So Harriet's gonna try to use Alexis and Kendall as her lead out. What do you think Harriet's shot are of coming around Kendall? I think it's pretty good. This is good, you know, you know, those go those two riders go head to head often. Um, at the timing right, you know, Harriet's one here, she knows what it takes. Um, so it's you know, complete and if anybody else in this field spring against Kendall, it, it's Harriet's best chance, you know, um, to, to do it and, and have the most confidence going into that into that situation. Yeah. Um, but now this is where it gets really tricky. It's it's three to go. Um, there's a lull. There's again nobody, no team's big enough to fully commit to a high pace at this point, and so it's just kind of going to be you know this bit of a bubble at the moment, um, which. Can, can get kind of sketchy if uh, as riders carry that much fatigue. To the start finish line, Tatiana Duenas Gomez with the orange helmet for Savannah College of Art and Design. She was on the Colombian national team as a junior and now studying uh, painting at the Savannah College of Art and Design. She is giving it a good kick and whoa, we got a woman. It was actually Tatiana crashed herself out in turn one. I jinxed her. Sorry, Tatiana. And with that, uh, she is no longer a factor in the race, but it looks like the entire field got around her, so that is great. And nice riding there by DNA Pro Cycling uh, with Kim Mucci now on the front. Now, okay, so Kim is going. We're looking at two laps to go. Is this too early for DNA? Yeah, I mean, they're just, you know, she's spending her effort now instead of you know, potentially later. And we're just going to see how that, you know, shakes out. Are they hoping to, you know, is Rachel putting a few riders in between? Uh, herself and Kim hoping that they will carry the momentum. I mean, er surely Erica Alar is not the Goldman Sachs is not going to, I would assume, fully hit out at this point uh, yeah. when, when Kim is done with her job, although that would be <laughs> ideal um, kind of for both programs, both DNA and Goldman Sachs in that, in that moment. So, um, you know, and then there is that, you know, odd single rider that can do random things at random times that can either help you or hurt you, uh, depending on the situation. Yeah, I'm surprised to see, I'm surprised to see uh, Erica this far up, but you know, Erica's got a lot of experience. She's a national champ in her own right. We're gonna be now looking at one lap to go. DNA Pro Cycling on the front with Gan Lucci. That's only gonna leave Rachel Langdon left in reserve behind. And let's see when and where Legion comes from. There they are on your left part of your screen. One lap to go here at Sunny King Criterium in Aniston. Alabama one lap remaining and as we are starting to see the big lift by the teams the King Lucci about to pull off because this is her final turn around Erica Carney their second wheel in the Piedmont cycling kit trying to find a right spot for her to be it's a little tricky with this field dynamic but here, where are those blue helmets of Legion of Los Angeles with Alexis Magner as the lead out for her sister Kendall Ryan behind mm -hmm. now making the turn onto turn two as we come down Lucci putting in a big dig but at this point in time her speed is starting to drop so we're going to see a pass in some way shape or form Kingdom Elite on the left side of the screen trying to get themselves up next to this lead out when's the jump going to occur you see now see Harriet Owen putting herself into the mix there right behind Kim Lucci and there's Kingdom with this drone shot you can now see we are coming four three wide into turn number three Erica Carney finding herself in the spot she did not want to be but at this point she's got to commit to this sprint if she's going to do it there's she, Erica Carney, one of the most experienced riders her local coach for Piedmont Cycling. Now in the front, she's just got to go for it because now she's got Alexis Magner and Kendall Ryan right on her wheel. Coming out of the final turn, number four, there's a kick by Legion of Los Angeles. It is Alexis Magner coming up on the right side of the road. Right behind her is her sister, Kendall Ryan. Kendall Ryan now kicks, but here comes Harriet Owen. Air Owen in the center of the screen in the white. Kendall Ryan in the center as well. Kendall Ryan with the big kick and... Throw to the line. 
and it will be Kendall Ryan, ladies and gentlemen. Kendall Ryan taking Sonny King Criterium here in Anniston, Alabama tonight with a perfectly timed execution of her sprint. Harriet Owen there in second, and Alexis Ryan finishing in third. Yeah, the, the sisters, you know, timed it perfect. You know, they, they found themselves in a good position. Um, you know, a little help with Erica being too far forward. Um, you know, I think Erica just would rather be, it's easier to be too far forward. It's better to be too far forward than, than too far back. Um, kind of at, at the end of the day, partly to stay safe. You know, Erica's a new mom, right? And there's a lot of different things kind of going on there. Um, and, and for Harriet, it looks like she just kind of a, a little too close to the wheel and didn't give herself the ability to take a, a full run. We kind of saw her pop out. Um, and not seemingly make quite as much progress as she wanted and kind of had to tuck back into the wheel. So we got a replay here of the finish. Kendall Ryan taking the win. And at the line, Alexis Magner holds on for second with the bike throw just ahead of Harriet Owen. So, wow, Legion of Los Angeles going one, two with only two riders in the race. My goodness. What do you think about that? Yeah, very impressive. I mean, right, they, they look at the field, probably make a really good assumption of what was going to happen stuck to a tactic um you know only had to chase what they felt like they had to chase in the very few instances um and then yeah played the their finish perfectly brilliant racing there but I, I really admire the patience of them as well we never saw them come through at all very astute very patient and their patience was rewarded so kendall ryan with the win alexis magner in second harriet owen in third luisa para of kingdom elite racing in fourth and erica carney holding on for fifth awesome love to see erica carney getting herself all the way up there Seeing everybody congratulating each other here. For and talking about what just transpired here at the first USA Crits race of the season. Our professional women's race. An amazing finish uh, to the first race of the season. With with Legion of Los Angeles coming out on top. All right, we're going to look at a replay of some of tonight's action. We started off under Golden Skies, and we saw Erica Carney jumping into the start list late race day edition. There she is on the front, setting off the tempo for Piedmont Cycling. Great to see her back with us in the two blue helmets of the race for Legion of Los Angeles sisters, Alexis Magner and Kendall Ryan. The race throughout saw a lot of a number of accelerations that would string out the field through and through. Kingdom Elite Racing on the front here. Numerous accelerations throughout the competition that were uh, stringing out the field and keeping it nice and high. Shannon Coke, one of the most aggressive riders throughout that right here on the front for Kingdom Elite Racing in the All Black and the Pinarellos. Followed there by Savannah College of Art and Design, also very aggressive throughout, but it was DNA Cycling who was trying to keep the tempo going with Kim Lucci and Rachel Langdon throughout, trying to protect Harriet Owen. You also saw the blue kits there of Goldman Sachs ETS with Audrey Drummond coming in down to Anniston, Alabama, but big acceleration throughout. In the finals, we did see DNA Pro Cycling taking a long approach to the lead out with Kimberly Lucci. Erica Carney found herself on the front a little bit earlier than she had wanted, but in the final results, we saw the top five women coming across the line, and it was Kendall Ryan taking the overall. Her sister, Alexis Magner, in second. Harriet Owen in third. In fourth, Louise Potter for Kingdom Elite Racing, rewarding all the effort of her overall team. Erica Carney for Piedmont Cycling in fifth. Rachel Langdon in sixth, Brittany Parfrey in seventh, Sarah Reigns in eighth, Shannon Koch in ninth, and Valentina Hernandez in tenth. So as a team, Kingdom Elite Racing getting three into the top five. But it is Legion of Los Angeles coming here with two and getting the top two steps. Great racing by all of them. Yeah, exec executed perfectly. Um, Kingdom Elite, you know, seemingly very strong. Some depth in the program, just... You know, I don't think executed, you know, quite perfect. Um, and it, I think could have, you know, 
done a couple things right to change, not maybe not the outcome of the race, but just kind of some dynamics within it um, to kind of really see what themselves were, um, you know, a little better, um, you know, and hopefully they can, you know, glean a lot out of this moving forward uh, on how to move forward and get Para onto the podium instead of fourth just outside of it. With that, we're going to take a, a brief break and hear from one of our sponsors of the event. We are here at the Sunny King Criterium here in Anniston, Alabama. We'll be right back. What's it like having ultra-fast, reliable internet from SparkLife? It's like scrolling to the end of the internet and back at warp speed and finding out you just won gold at the World Scrolling Tournament of Champions. Or streaming in 4K on multiple devices all at once. That's amazing internet. And now, Sparklight is offering ultra-fast, reliable internet for just $34.95 a month for 12 months. Get 300 meg internet with unlimited data and a 12-month price lock guarantee. Equipment included. Call or visit sparklight.com slash savings. Sparklight, a new breed in high speed. Sunny King Automotive Group is celebrating 100 years in Anniston. Please join us in marking our centennial anniversary in our hometown. From all of us at Sunny King Ford, Sunny King Honda, and Sunny King Toyota, we thank you for 100 years, and we look forward to many, many more. Sunny King Automotive Group, serving Greater Calhoun County since 1922. Big thanks to Sunny King for their uh, continued support of the Sunny King Criterium. And Sunny King is one of the oldest dealerships in the area with uh, celebrating 102 years at their local dealership location. This is a picture of the original dealership with 102 years ago for the uh, for Ed Aniston, Alabama. Big thanks again to Sunny King for all of your continued support here at the Sunny King Criterion in Aniston, Alabama. We're about to get our men's races underway. And it sounds like our call-ups are about to begin behind us. Our men's race is gonna be action-packed here overall. If you're just joining us, welcome to Sunny King Criterium here in Aniston, Alabama. I'm Gabe Lloyd alongside Daniel Holloway. Uh, we have a great night of racing ahead of us still to come, but before we get there, let's take a look back at 2023 racing before we get into 2024. Here we go, Danny Summerhill on the front coming in in the uh, ACC Beaters jersey for tonight. And Will Harden also returning to us in Aniston, Alabama. And Fury joining us last season. Our men's field this year boasting 110 starters overall, which of course will affect the race dynamic. We had a lot of very strong riders last season. This is Olympian Gavin Hoover for Legion of Los Angeles last season. But it is John Clark of the Miami Knights always setting the tempo here for the Miami Knights. They were trying to work for their final sprinter, Alfredo Rodriguez. And in last year, you cannot forget the fact that Rodriguez thought he had it. He threw the bike at the finishing arch, but the finishing line is 20 feet beyond that. And Kay Bickmore gets the win last season, one of Kate's best races of the season. Logan, one of the closest finishes that we'd ever seen here at the Sunny King Criterion. Kate Bickmore with the win just ahead of the astonished Alfredo Rodriguez. Ty Magner, no stranger to the podium here at the Sunny King Criterion. Magner third last year, same as in 22. Returning to Sunny King will be Rodriguez, Magner, and Summerhill. Uh, Summerhill, one to watch, and Will Harden also returning to Sunny King Criterium. So we'll keep an eye on those four that are returning from the top 10 in 2023. We're looking at our call-ups right now here in 2024 at the Sunny King Criterium here in Anniston, Alabama. Kicking off our USA Crits 2024 season. Our first call-up. It's going to be Alfredo Rodriguez. There he is, Alfredo Rodriguez this year racing for Rainstorm Racing. Under Thomas Craven, Rodriguez will be looking for the finish line this season in the right spot, getting himself his final nutrition there as he gets himself ready. Next to him, Ty Magner. Ty 
a winner here way back in uh, 2015, I, or 15, I believe. Magner on the podium in the past two years. He will also be looking for the top step. Right next to him will be Simon Daniels of Belgium. This young man winning some races at the Intelligentsia Cup last season, jumping over from the Lotto Development Program into Butcher Box for cycling this year. We're now looking at O Ngulo in the all black racing for Nashville local cycling. He's part of the D4. Oh, switching them up. Apparently they switched places. So this is actually Owen there. I believe that other young man is Alberto Vargas. Yeah, so Vargas there in the all black. This is Owen. These guys are not or lining up in order as we would expect. <laughs> Here we are from Foundation Cycling. Uh, this is Mr. Vargas for Foundation Cycling. These guys racing the uh, USA Crit Series as well as the NCL. This is Brian Gomez for Rainstorm Racing. Gomez, very, very capable. We'll be looking for him. He has numerous wins, also racing under the Colombian national team on the track this winter. So he'll be bringing a whole bunch of fitness. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your program. Work up Jonathan Prim out of Austin, Texas. Connor Malervi, also Ready for the Cliff Family of Drifters. There is Cesar Marte, I believe, for the Nashville program, another D1 program. Uh, Emil Abraham, certainly keeping it going here. My oldest goodness. guy in the field. <laughs> he is, absolutely. And uh, finishing off is Dave Gutenplan there on the right in the all neon. So a great set of full field here tonight in Sunny King Criterium for the Aniston, uh, Aniston, Alabama race. The whistle has just been blown and we are now racing 110 men, racing full gas here tonight. We are racing the first race of our USA crit season and it looks like David Gutenplan already has an issue in turn number one as he raises his right hand going to the pit. Men are getting themselves sorted here. We'll see what's going on. Oh, oh crash. and some boys uh, doing a little fence rearranging back there as they come out of turn number two. And uh, this young man is going to get himself set. Now we are in a criterion first lap. Oh, my goodness. He's going to need to get himself some neutral support there. He's got a little bit of time. He can get himself to that finishing line, but we're going to get ourselves some staffing over to into turn, uh, turn number two. Turn two. With these big fields, if they make that left-hand turn, they have that cross light, um, which can be a little bit tricky to see. And so we have one gentleman there putting himself into the barriers early on. <coughs> That's Luke Manning for ETP Cycling. But already we're seeing our riders come up and through. Nice sunset here in Aniston, Alabama tonight perfectly clear skies and it's going to be Atlanta Rise coming through the start finish line. And so far you can just see a little more patient um, out of the, the pro one two field here. Um, you know letting guys go off the front create some space and um, you know they, keeping the pressure on but just seeing really if if these guys um, going off the front are going to continue to extend it their gap or just get it out to an eight second or 10 second and then hold as kind of some fatigue sets in and they have to find a tempo. Um, so they're not doing too much to bring this back to setting a, you know, enough tempo so it doesn't just blow out to 30 seconds super fast, uh, but not so much that, again, they're wasting too much energy to chase it all the way back when it could um, and is likely gonna fade from the, the front. And we're seeing Gage Heck already getting himself into this separation. Interesting to see Gage, one of our, uh, you know, he's on the national team for cross. He's been trying to do a lot of things over in Europe with cross. He was on a Volo for a number of years, and now he's aged out of that program. He's now on the Volitious uh, team with the Rubber Duckies, bridging himself across to Atlanta Rise. And uh, we're going to see where these guys shake out. Caleb Landgrabe is your rider for Atlanta Rise and Gage Heck. Yeah, Gage is going to be one of these guys. He's, you know, um, 
stepped away a little bit. Um, he's on this smaller team, and you know, the, there's a lot of riders in this group that don't know who Gage is and don't recognize the kid and, and give this kid some leash. Um, it could be very, very dangerous for him as um, Gage is a guy who can, you know, on a, on a course like this is one that suits him very well, could solo uh, make life very difficult for uh, these, these, larger, these larger teams. But I do know he's now working, I think, with United at the airport doing um, traffic or plane. Gage? Uh, Gage, yeah. Wow. Um, so he's he's directing planes down at the, the Denver the Denver airport. Like with the light sticks and stuff? I believe so. Or he's working his way to the, to the light sticks. I, uh, in my, my normal daytime job, I, I visit and um, work with his dad uh, okay. at, a, at a shop. And so he's kind of filled me into what, what Gage is doing and very, all that stuff. So Very cool. He's having fun this summer and then uh, working on trying to find himself a good cross program to uh, to head back over to Europe uh, later this winter. Amazing, I love that. That's super cool, good for him. Big field here, 110 on the start sheet. Uh, what do we think? We think first like 20 minutes, we're gonna be getting rid of the back third of this field? Yeah, people are just gonna find their, find their space, find their legs, the, the tempo right. Uh, here shortly, we're gonna be seeing the five laps in um, sprint. Right, so we're gonna see kind of who's uh, there's a crash right here. Oh boy! Um, halfway Big. up the Ooh. that keeps keeps growing. Um, so everybody's getting settled. It's the first race of the year. Um, this Caesar Marte. How do he lose is, his helmet? Is down with, with his helmet off. Some Owen Gillett, I see, is down there. Connor Mullavy with Cliff Family Cliff Family Drifters is uh, stuck behind that. Pat Casey as well. Some Nashville local guys. Um, Quite, quite a big crash. Um, Garrison with Nish Racing got himself caught up in that. Um, these guys are getting cleaned up pretty quick, but Marte, that might be the the end of his his, his day. Wow. Well, that'll certainly shake things up. Marte was their protected sprinter for that program. Uh, so we'll see what the plan B will be for that group. Ty Magner's here by himself. He's with the blue helmet and all black kit, racing for Legion of Los Angeles. And uh, we interested to see how he floats near the front, I guess really just to keep himself safe and out of that type of scrim, right? Exactly. Um, and, and this yellow team, yellow orange, is the new um, Rainstorm racing team. You know, this is the combination of Texas Roadhouse and American Cycling Group from last year. This is the, their new look. Um, with familiar names and faces, just a different uh, different look uh, for them in, in 2024. So we're all going to get very familiar with that uh, quite quickly uh, with them at the front of the race. All right, so we have a five lap sprint in the USA Crit Series, and that is for points only. So it's 10, 7, 5, 3, and 2 points. The top five riders across the line will get themselves we go back. points. And so we're going to be looking at. Uh, top five getting themselves USA crits points here this evening and the next time through. Looking like some of our uh, local riders getting themselves into the mix here, but I do believe that the Rainstorm program is going to be looking for some of these USA crits uh, points as they are trying to chase this series this year. That's a pin of College of Art and Design on the front right now. My goodness, think they're going to hold off. Look at Mr. Danny Summerhill, though, talking to Brian Gomez. Brian looking comfortable. And here's Cesar Marte, apparently going to get back into the race. But we have another guy down in turn two. Turn two is proving extremely tricky here tonight for our pro men's field. We're going to keep a look at our, hopefully look at our finish line here. As we're coming out of turn number four, big kick here by Savannah College of Art and Design, but here's the acceleration by Rainstorm with Brian Gomez as he flicks uh, Danny Summerhill off. Summerhill comes up and around nearly uncontested for maximum points. And so Danny comes to the line, easily collecting 10 full points. This is Connor Muller, yeah, I believe. Is that Connor? Coming through in second there. Yeah, yeah, you can see fun. Ty Magner right there, just a third, fourth wheel coming out of the sprint, did follow the acceleration, but what it does is it puts him right at the front of the race for the counterattacks. It also, um, he's reading the race without spending too much energy. Um, and so he's just, if we're looking at 
if you're a single rider trying to race a perfect race, he's starting off on a really great foot that he's not spent too much energy. He's following wheels. He's staying out of uh, the crash from guys that are, you know, over anxious and trying trying to do too much. So your results from that first sprint, Danny Summerhill taking the top 10, Connor Malervi in second, also with the counter. Brian Gomez holds on for third, Gabriel Payne in fourth, and Ty Magner in fifth. So Nashville Cycling and some of these uh, Dave Guten plan riders getting themselves into the pits. A few riders just having some issues. Looks like uh, Cesar Marte still in the pits down there. And the rider field sort of spread out here momentarily as the riders come by. Little counterattack here by Will Harden. And we're trying to, the officials are trying to push the riders over to road right. They're not releasing the riders from the pit yet. Oh, that is a brutal release. Wow. Yeah, they are uh, still in the 11, 11 tooth cog, which is, you know, uh, poor planning. Uh, not, um, you know, it's one of those things you got caught up in the crash or an incident and you get back in the pit and you're rushing and you're stuck in an 11 cog and you haven't processed that the pit is you know into corner one still going uphill so it's getting your gear right to get you know um in the right position to get out of that um into a good position but we can also see that in that big crash same thing officials held that group until the the back of the peloton uh passed them and it's going to be some hard work for guys like uh, ian garrison uh back there um and some of the other larger names that got caught it's going to have to work their way through the field um in an expedited manner, but also be patient and efficient with it. Um, so they have some legs in the last 20, 25 minutes of this race. Yeah, I mean, these first, uh, we'll call it 45 minutes are really just about getting to those final minutes. So you gotta just, you know, do what you need to do to get yourself there cleanly. This field's starting to string out a little bit though in pursuit of Will Harden. Well, looking through the armpit, and here is the catch at the start-finish line. Riders just going to ride right on up and over and through, and the boys are all single file. Danny Summerhill coming through looking very comfortable, and Cesar Marte still in the pit. How many laps does he get in the pit? Uh, let's see if the official's call. You know, he was kind of the last guy up uh, assessing his, his physical being before getting there, um, which I think is okay, and then you get there and have to have the mechanic assess the damage. and. Um, you know, if the mechanic is, if the bike is quite messed up and they're really working on it, there's some grace period. Um, but if it looks like the mechanic is, is slow rolling things and they are gonna get in that instance, the first five minutes of the race. So it's, as much as our rules are black and white, there's a little bit of grace period. You kind of have to get, um, and you know, the officiating crew, is, you know, is experienced. They can read a situation in an authentic manner um, to kind of, uh, you know, give some grace, uh, to give everybody the best chance they can to get back in there. Um, you know, without over overdoing it, right, or without underdoing it as, as well. So, part of the game is the pit, playing the pit game well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mr. Michael Hernandez on the front right now, former uh, amateur national champion in the Criterium. Uh, he did he get his police certification down there in Florida? Yeah, I think he is uh, now officially um, a policeman down there, following his in his dad's footsteps. Cool, good for him. Uh, Michael Hernandez, uh, part of the Rainstorm Racing Program. Uh, again, very capable rider on his own right, but he is surrounded by one of the deepest squads that we've seen yet. And uh, this is really their first outing, though. This is not only the first USA Crits race of the season, but it's really the first team event for this whole program right now. So they're sort of sussing each other out. And remember, this is a, a blending of a few programs for Rainstorm Racing with uh, Texas Roadhouse and the American Cycling Group coming together from last year. Right now, we're looking at rider number 90, Lionel Rodriguez. He's done the professional pin job, make that thing as small as possible, make it hard on those uh, number counters, heavily folded. <laughs> Again, it's part, part of the game you play, you push the you, you push that envelope on what you can get away with. Sometimes the numbers, you know, arguably do get 
uh, quite big. But now we can see that Michael Garrison has, has made it up out of the pit, up into fourth wheel. He's in that green um, jersey there from Niche Speed Club, project that he's kind of started started down there. So it's good to see, um, you know, a guy like Garrison, kind of the world tour path, um, recorrection and come embrace the, and come have fun and embrace the crits. He's big engine. I think he's won some gravel races down in the Southeast so far this year. So okay. he's definitely tuned up. The fitness is, is there. Um, and this is definitely of course that suits a guy like that. I mean, if him and a guy like Gage Heck get off the front and start swapping turns, um, and they're given any kind of bit of a leash, uh, because people don't recognize them and know them, it could be, um, a, a long day for, for some of those teams, but those are definitely breakaway allies. Uh, you want to look for if that's your strategy. Guys, the front look very comfortable to me right now. It looks like we're they're yep. sort of doing some math a little bit, knowing that the calculus for this solo rider is not in his favor. So nobody's really panicking. Yep, just hanging out, um, kind of going with flow, and, and here it is, gauge hacked. And I think anytime we see the pace really come off, um, where it's that spread out and guys are looking around, gauge is 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 not of the mindset to just sit around he wants he wants these things to be hard for 60 minutes and it be kind of you know who is who are the guys at the end of 60 minutes that can really ride so um it's a blessing and a curse <laughs> curse for him to want to ride that way but it um he's a very much a good ally in a team but if you got a guy that can just motor for 60 minutes and use it to your advantage it'd be very fruitful yeah Ty Magner in that blue helmet still uh, looking comfortable. There's Gage coming through in turn four. This rider still, he's uh, been off the front line all. Uh, Rodriguez for MC Cycling Team out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. So he's put on a good effort, put on a good show, but. Oliver Flout from uh, Cliff Family Drifters driving the pace up the hill, pulling a work hard and humble guy, and uh, got Michael Garrison with him. Uh, Emil Abraham getting into the front as well, but it's, it's funny. We see this race play out and, you know, a couple years of trend and then something bucks the trend mm. and then people become hyper aware. So people are going to look to, you know, previous years, you know, uh, a group is lap field late. Okay, I'm going to be conservative. You know, I don't want to miss that late, that, that late move. These guys aware of the TV cameras and waving to their fans, friend and family that are uh, walk, tuning in. And if you're just joining us, thank you for joining us here at the USA Crits kickoff to 2024. We are at the Sunny King Criterium in Anniston, Alabama. My name's Gabe Lloyd. I'm alongside Daniel Holloway bringing you guys all the action throughout the day. And we're wrapping up here with our pro men's race. Currently, we are about 15 minutes into the race. And now uh, Gage Hecht jumping off the front for the second time in this competition. Yeah, if I'm reading this race and, you know, a guy like Ty will know Gab, um, Gage, um, a couple of these guys, you know, the, with each attack, I would take it more serious from Gage. The first one, I'd, you know, definitely have my eyes up and watch how much interest he's putting into it, um, how much his gap is going out. So the first one I'm not caring about. The second one, I'm paying a little more attention and you know ty i would imagine as he's watching gage go up the road um you know maybe the fifth or sixth time if gage comes back ty's going to be present you know because he knows the, the fatigue in the field is wearing a guy like gage he doesn't deteriorate like 90 percent of the field is going to deteriorate over a hard one hour race just because that's who gage is and what his ability is so as a sprinter knowing that right like you got to let him do a little bit <laughs> we're out his tank but um at some point you do want to join him if it's going to head that direction and then we see these yellow kits of rainstorm racing now coming to the front with michael hernandez and danny summerhill these guys have been brought here by none other than thomas craven who has an illustrious history in our sport we got a chance to talk to thomas yesterday at the pre-party over here in aniston so we're going to hear what he had to say about today's race you know, this is going to be the first race uh, with a full squad for us. So, you know, we just got kit, we just got bikes, and we just drove the van and just got stickered. So, you know, we're really flying by the seat of our pants here. So, you know, all these guys have ridden together. We've all raced together. 
Uh, we're going to have dinner together tonight, so that will be the first team meeting. So hopefully we can pull it all together and put the first guy, put somebody on the front. We want to be winning every single race that we go to, and that's the goal. Obviously we're going to get beat. You know, we, can't, we can't predict the future, but you know, that's our goal. We're going there to win and, and have fun and do the same thing that we've always done. We're back here right now with uh, Gage Hecht off the front, but thanks to Thomas Craven for bringing his entire program out today for their first uh, sort of team check in the overall for the 2024 season. Gage Hecht looks like he is uh, seeing the writing on the wall. He's gonna sit up and as these riders start to uh, bring him back, he will reset. But as Daniel Holloway was talking about here momentarily ago before Thomas Craven said to us, um, you know, we have to watch these moves by Gage. He can keep doing this. This race is not long enough to shake Gage, and eventually there's a chance that a rider like Gage could force a separation. Field right now still largely together. We have certainly seen a few riders uh, come off the back of the race. We had a large crash about five minutes into the competition, which has affected some of the final kick finishers, such as Cesar Marte. Let's see if they can recover in time for the final kick. So we're looking about just about 19 and a half minutes of racing a lap. Pace has been nice and high throughout. 110 men started tonight's competition here in Aniston, Alabama. Great to see such a large turnout for this race overall. And many of them still here in the race. So this four corner crit deceptively hard though. The load builds on the legs and here we see Ty Magner. He is here by himself tonight and he is now taking up the front doing some pace setting on the downhill and he has forced a gap that is now drawn out. Let's say four. Let's get our drone caught up here, but we now have three riders. Michael Hernandez is part of that at the back of the group. Interesting split here, and I believe that's going to be Simon Daniels from ButcherBox that's going to try to bridge across, but Ty Magner forcing the split. Did you see that one coming? Um, it doesn't surprise me, right? This is you know very much an ideology that you know, I would have followed an individual rider here, uh, feeling confident you know, in myself. Is you know, Ty's fast. He, he knows how to win this race. But it also is very difficult if he's going to race a full rainstorm racing team, right? If he's going to go up against Butcher Box that has four or five guys, and you know all, all these guys, people that have teammates, his his best chance is to make it a smaller and smaller group and isolate um, some of these bigger teams and, and you know faster riders into a one-on-one -on -one situation and trust and trust his his stuff. And at 20 minutes in. It's really good timing, you know, like we've seen in other races. It's a, it's a time period in which a uh, majority of people are going to ask and want similar spike, especially if they've been up the front. Um, it's typically a reshuffle point where some of the, the better guys can kind of end up shuffled a little too far back. And then some, you know, some of the B riders end up in the middle that can't quite follow, and that's why the gap opens uh, quite quickly. So. What we're going to see here now is is Hernandez isn't going to work too much, right? Because why should he? Tagner's tie is uh, frustrated for sure. And now it's really for these other smaller team riders to just kind of commit to this, get it away, and then and then figure it out. Um, he doesn't want to let this guy go. That's Simon Daniels from Belgium. Uh, yeah. Really strong rider. He really had an impact on Intelligentsia last year. Uh, just a quick inventory of who initially made this split is Ty Magner, Michael Hernandez, Simon Daniels, Roderick uh, Esconga Diaz, Asa Black, Keelan Ontiveros, and Will Harden making that initial split. So this is Ty, uh, a little bit frustrated. He swung, swings off and he sees that nobody pulls through and stays on the wheel of Daniels here. All right, it's Ty wants this to stay together as Daniel was just talking about and, you know, his frustration evident. Yeah, and he's got to, he, you know, he, he gets one opportunity to kind of yell at the group, get him motivated, and then he's just got to put his head down and, and, and let it roll. Um, you know, keep these other guys motivated. Ignore Hernandez for 10, 15 minutes. Let this thing get 20, 30 seconds, and then try to have a conversation with it. Try to, you know, wear him out, make him tired. Um, but establish the breakaway first before you get too flustered um, and, and things just come back, and it, it's a little bit of a wasted energy. But... Um, and we can see it's kind of ones and twosies coming back. Garrison makes the move, uh, reads the race well. 
Um, and then another Rainstorm Racing guy uh, is that, uh, and that's Rodriguez, I believe. Looks yeah. like Alfredo, um, who's not a guy you want to be countered by, um, but that's Gomez actually. And Brian Gomez, I think, was was coming across from the field at one point, and uh, I think Kyle Perry's the other yellow back there. So we're, uh, you know, seeing the, the front of the field right now, potentially seeing a nice counterattack, but Rainstorm now represented in this with Brian Gomez. Now Gomez is part of this with the Rainstorm program. Gomez has been racing with the Colombian national team on the track this winter. Uh, just coming off of Pan Am Games, I believe, in Los Angeles. Yeah, very successful campaign down there with uh, Team Columbia and himself. Um, but as we, as, yeah, as we get back to this, right, Ty leaves themselves a little, you know, vulnerable to a, a counterattack of Garrison and Gomez and, and guys like that. And you can just see Gar the motor on Garrison um, and is really going to test test this field a bit but if we get another rainstorm guy up there work hard be humble guy butcher box you know definitely you really start to isolate the rest of the field and, and who's going to chase it's going to have to be a big move for ty after things settle a little bit that he might take one or two guys with him um so be interested to see how this works out again under that ideology of three minutes five minutes hard really establish this thing even though it hurts and then do inventory do check you know if you need the rest of recovery you could basically stop working and go back to the field, right? And, and or you like it, find a way to recover in tempo mode with six, seven other guys. Um, and the wind has really died up. We can look over at the the big flag. It's basically um, hanging straight up and down now, and that helps the breakaway coming around corner two into the back stretch. Is they, they're not having a, a headwind slowing them down. They get to carry all of that momentum. Range run with two, and here with Mr. Kyle Perry also now making contact, but they also have I think Summy in this other chase group so a lot of representation here i was wit witnessing a little bit of bunching up occurring on uh turn one in the middle of the field and to me that would also indicate that there's a chance for some of these smaller groups to be able to carry more speed throughout because eventually the field's not going to be able to uh not going to be able to pedal their way back into that disadvantage so some drop riders now getting a little bit into the traffic as they come through the start finish line but your leaders establishing a larger group at the front. We're about to see what I would call probably the first break of the night's contest come together as we get into turn two back there. Uh, the rest of your field just struggling to get into contact. Mr. Kyle Perry now on the front for Rainstorm Racing. He is joined by Brian Gomez right behind. We're gonna take a look at who is that? Andrew Jeanette, um, right there, first butcher box. Peter Olaniski, um, second butcher box rider. Um, Summer Hill made that move. Uh, work hard for you, humble guys. Um, behind, we're just really gonna see who's gonna help Ty Magner. You know, who's he's he's gonna want to keep the tempo up, but he flicks his elbow. Who's gonna be present and, want, and wanting to help? Um, so. This break, there's three rainstorm. They do have to participate the first little bit so they keep guys motivated instead of trying to sit one guy and the rest of the group feel frustrated that one of them is resting this early. Um, they need to kind of commit to blow the gap out and then pick who's going to start resting once it, once it stabilizes. Uh, but Nashville local ha has missed it. And it looks like they're just doing the sellout. Like uh, one guy is going to go as hard as he can for as long as he can to just get at least one of their guys across. They've at least made the move, um, and it's and it's the right way to do it rather than try to tempo it back um, and either potentially not get there or reset it. And the counterattack goes without your favor again. So, um, so we have ten that have uh, just about two, three seconds ish. We have all these. Little onesies, twosies, still trying to get themselves across as well. Um, and just to see whether or not we uh, are going to see a successful breakaway or if it's going to turn over. Yeah, and here's an instance where we talked about earlier of, of getting taken out of the back. Gomez just took Jeanette and a couple of these guys out of the back of the breakaway, mm -hmm. you know, calling their bluff instead of like, you want to play games even though we have the numbers, then we've got the numbers to take you out, right? And now it's two on one instead of two on three. Nice. You know, so. It's just savvy gameplay, right? You know, some guys are playing checkers, some guys are playing chess, and some guys are playing 3D chess. <laughs> oh, look at that gap, it's growing. So that's really tough for the field because they can see them right now. Now, now would this be a situation where somebody like Ty Magner should just like pop across? 
I think he has time to be patient, right? Because there's still enough guys feeling like they're they're missing, they're missing out in like Nashville local, right? They're still going to put somebody there. Uh, Will Harden maybe missed it, right? You can kind of count on the goes. So Ty's keeping inventory. Who's made it? Who's not? Yeah. Who's maybe a guy that I could um, find myself with? Uh, whether it be a, a Will Harden, um, maybe an Oliver Flout from Cliff Family Drifters. You know, the, another big motor that could help him get across. Maybe a Preston Eye. Right, um, so he still has a little time to, to play patient. He probably knows his time window. If it gets beyond 10 seconds, between 20, 10 and 15 seconds, I could bridge solo comfortably. If it gets to 20, it's a it's a really really big ask. If it's seven seconds, it's too close that people can bunny hop behind me. Okay. Right, so he's just watching, taking inventory, even seeing if this breakaway is is going to work nice together. You know, he's. Right, he's been a professional for a long time, right? So he's making a lot of calculated decisions, um, you know, looking into the future, going, you know, and gambling a little bit. That may not walk together, and it's so far it's playing into his favor in that capacity. Yeah, he looked very comfortable as he rolled through the start finish line that last time around, not looking uh, distressed really in any way, shape, or form. And as you just said, this, these gaps were small enough that they were able to just sort of bring be all brought back together. And so that group of 10 that had about three to five seconds at one point in time, all neutralized, were reshuffling the deck one more time. And Mr. Magner did nothing to actually bring that back, which will benefit him ultimately. So we sort of reset, right? And we're now at 30 minutes into this competition. Uh, first third is done. We're now looking in sort of the mid middle portion of this contest. We're going to see whether or not we're able to keep the pace high or if things are going to shift up. Um, a lot of big heavy pedal strokes coming through the start finish line right now. And some of these gaps are starting to appear. But again, the field overall is still cruising. And you see some guys even coasting into turn number one. Big field size. Remember, 110 riders started this evening here in Anniston, Alabama for Sunny King Criterium, the first race of the USA Criterium Series. We're just about 30 minutes into tonight's competition, but we've had a great day of racing overall. We wrapped up uh, two SEC Collegiate Championship races for men and women this afternoon. We've done our professional women's race where Legion of Los Angeles went 1-2 with Kendall Ryan and Alexis Magner holding off Harriet Owen for third. And now we're into our professional men's race that started with 110. 30 minutes in, not yet into laps. We're still going by time here in Anniston, and we're looking forward to seeing how the final uh, two-thirds of this race play out. Yeah, we can see gaps opening again and without you know visually looking like there was a big attacks or massive accelerations and you could see that already you know fatigue has set in for genuine fatigue has set in for 50 percent of this field like fatigue where they're just like how long can i ride with what i have in me then you have the other 50 is going to be split again of guys going like my temp my time window is another 20 minutes and then you have that next 25 percent that's like you know i'm still racing i'm playing the game i've got plenty of plenty of action left and so we're starting to see that, you know, just about the half halfway point um, going on. And I think we're just going to see these, it, it kind of yo-yo and yo-yo. And at this point, I see something going off and making it making it to the line without a big group. If they continue to kind of race like this. Sure. Leave myself a door there. Right? And it makes it route to say, well, I did say. Um, but, you know, Garrison doesn't want to sit around. Gage Hecht is not going to want to sit around. Harden is not going to want to sit around. Um, you know, too much to, to end in a field sprint. This is uh, Mr. Michael Garrison for North Georgia Cycling Association showing us uh, how it's done. So this is a Garrison that you were talking about earlier, yep. where his brother Ian also was in the World Tour. So Ian was on Quick Step uh, previously, rode a year for Legion. Uh, we haven't seen him um, in a bit. Um, and then, yeah, his little brother having some fun, getting some photos. Um, doing a bit of a mixed schedule from my understand, doing some gravels, and some crits, you know. Is it, is it gonna get crazy and do some mountain biking and track racing, if you will? Yeah. Um, some cross, that'd be the true one of a kind rider in America right now that's doing, doing everything rather than just a little bit of crits and a little bit of gravel. It's really interesting to watch him. I mean, he's been on the front quite a lot in the first 30 minutes of racing. And like Brian Gomez was just on the front there and he like stood up on the pedals and just cut across the field instead of just letting Brian do the pull. Yeah. I don't understand that. I mean, like, right, he's, 
he's an incredible motor. Okay. A big, big motor. Really, really talented, right? He's young, 23, so he's got a little bit of an attitude. Yeah. He's out here having fun. He's not part of a big organization. You have to kind of wear the suit and tie and play within a box. So okay. he gets to let, you know, a little bit of his personality come out a little bit, have some fun without, you know, too, too many repercussions. So we're seeing him kind of having some fun. You know, he's, he's another guy that just wants to go super hard because his motor is so big. <laughs> you know, he wants, he wants it to be this whole thing of like, hey, let's all swing for 60 minutes and, and who has it, right? And, okay. Um, which is fun to see and you can mix that up and, you know, I would, you know, that was part of my personality when I was racing. Let's go, boys. Let's see who's got it, but then can also think, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I think he, he's, he's getting the first part and not that he's not a thinker, right? But he's got to find himself in positions. He's got the motor to push himself into positions where he starts to think, but guess who wants to play gay check? You know, now he's got Connor, Connor Muller with him, with him as well, um, which are good teams. You want up there to cancel, cancel the back out, you know? Yeah. And now but you can see it's, it's getting sticky back there. It's yeah, it's get, getting sticky. Um, Not a lot of yellow shoulders in those mixes yet either. We have, we have Gomez up here up front, but I don't want to see it. Oh, who's that? Sunny? Summer Hill. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I really don't think we're going to see Rain miss out on anything. I think any group of you know, two plus, three plus, there's going to be a yellow jersey in it. Um, and, and so, um, and he's, he's going to be there, so it's a free ride, or just, you know, make people think on how hard they want to be a part of that breakaway if they want okay. to take Danny with him. And there's potentially a way they get halfway at stalls. Danny can look around and be like, well, see you later, boys. Didn't he do that at uh, <laughs> St. Louis last year in the race you were in? Um, I didn't see that part of the race. <laughs> I think everybody saw the part of the race I was in. It was very, um, when it got sticky, very much middle of the group. So <laughs> I didn't see exactly what Danny did uh, on that day. But I'm sure it would not surprise me. Yeah. Such power there, just popping across. So there he is. He's looking for a way to pop and see if he can do it. Yeah, and, and so far, you know, 35 minutes in, who, we, who we've seen from Rainstorm Racing, right? We've seen Gomez. We've seen Summerhill. And we've seen Hernandez, right? Who haven't we seen? Alfredo Rodriguez. Ooh. So they are looking at him, based on his race history here, as the, you know, as the guy. And I think in our pre-race show, um, you know, on the call-up, we talked about, you know, I think Rodriguez wants redemption yeah. for last year. And it, if that comes to fruition, the celebration we're going to see for him for the redemption show, I think is going to be uh, quite spectacular. <laughs> I think we're at the halfway point of this race, apparently. So 35 minutes apparently marks our halfway point of this race, which means we're at USA Crits Midway Sprint. We're going to see uh, 10, 7, 5, 3, and 2 points awarded to our leaders for the next lap across. Again, this is just for the USA Crits GC. Overall, there's not a sprint jersey this year. There's only overall, and Daniel and I think that's great, right? That gives an opportunity for a rider to sort of play with their GC aspirations a bit through these mid-race creams. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. We have a breakaway of more than five, so not everybody will get a point here. But uh, Connor Maloney's in there. I see Andy Scarano's in there. And uh, Mr. Garrison playing around in the midst of this whole thing. Gage Heck has actually made contact into that group too at the back, so. Gage is there. Looks like Danny Summerhill's got some friends trying to bridge across. Lurvy, Garrison. Looking to see. Pete Olenichek is in there for a butcher box. Okay. Garrison coming through. And a Nashville local has continued to find themselves on the back foot doing these massive massive efforts to to make the move and, and digging themselves a hole instead of being a little more forward um in, in the peloton to to make this work of being in the moves a little less physically intensive so Connor Malevi, uh brian gomez riley reitzman broderick alsconga diaz and Andy Scarano making the top five. Peter Almzek, Gage Hecht, 
Kyle Tesler, Danny Summerhill, and Gabriel Mendez are the other riders in those top tens. But the top five getting themselves points. Connor Mullery taking ten big ones. Connor Mullery. And uh, Brian Gomez getting himself the Rainstorm Racing five point, seven points. Riley Reitzman in third. And Roderick Escondia Diaz right there for MC Cycling Team. Those guys that come out to play, it's not a team I heard of or necessarily some names, but they've been, you know, making these moves, uh, putting the pressure on the, the front of this race. Andy Scarano on the front. Uh, Scarano's always been a big player here. He's been through the Tyler Perry Studios program with Emil Abraham as well. Now on the uh, Work Hard Be Humble Nashville Ville style kit something there is that another merger this year i remember i thought work hard be humble was a, a new york based yeah, program i thought it was a new york program too but they've combined some issues and there we see ty magner back in the fold after kind of a 15-ish minute hiatus from really kind of being in the action yeah recovering at speed as it were and almost a reshuffling of the deck after that mid-race preem so and here he goes. Who's he? Ty Magner. Ty Magner, boom. Counter. And Who's drawing out? Simon Daniels. Garrison. Uh, Garrison. Gomez. Rodriguez. Oliver Flout, maybe? Yep. Ty Magner, put the back to the front. So we got Twitter Fox, North Georgia, Legion. Now Daniels don't not want to just get some open leash there. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm sure nobody's really let the leash open up too much for anybody throughout the night. From how he's racing now to how you saw him race Intelligentsia, is he a little more controlled in the team environment versus Intelligentsia that Belgian team could just pop off and flash the hips where it seems like now it's a little more calculated. I mean, clearly he's going harder, you know. But is he a little more calculated now that he's integrating into a year-long environment versus just swinging like he was swinging at Intelligentsia? Perhaps, yeah. I mean, I think when you come in with a lot of Devo team, uh, you know, you got a lot of guys who can hit and hit it hard, and they also really mixed up the overall uh, race when they were in a, at Intelligentsia, which is now the Chicago Grit. Uh, you know, now he's sort of in a little bit of different dynamic, but he's certainly biding his time. Right, he's not forcing the race. He's allowing. He's waiting for the lulls and then hitting it. Yeah, and there we see, you know, on the, on the other side of the spectrum, right, Emil Abraham, one of the, the, if not one of the oldest, the oldest guy in the field, tons of experience. Um, Forty minutes into a, you know, quite hard race, and, and here he is, you know, side by side with with Ty Magner, playing a very crafty, um, well use of energy race. And he's, I mean, very small. We can't see him. You're barely see there. He is there right he there. Is. Red he's, helmet. Red uh, arms. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, Miel has been through and through so many great programs, and he knows exactly how to survive in these races. There he goes in the bottom right of the corner screen. But Neil Abraham, a long time, a long time uh, participant in, in racer, and always at the front too. He's always been at. He was up at podiums for a long time in his own right. He's now mentoring a lot of riders in the Tyler Perry Studios program. We actually got to talk to Emil earlier today and uh, get his insight on uh, some of the in inputs of these first race seasons. Let's hear what Emil Abraham had to say. I mean, I just think it's going to be fast. This is always a fast race. Um, it's a little bit of a difficult course because you have a long hill from turn four all the way up to turn two, really. And, um, you know, I think a lot of the big teams are going to come out to try to make it hard, split up the group early. Um, and it'll be, you know, a lot of survival. Um, but I think there's going to be a lot of nervousness also in the group just because it's the first really big race of the year. And, um, you know, we just hope, like, you know, it's going to be a nice, safe, clean race. It would be really hard to say, you know, based on like, I haven't seen any teams race yet. Um, so it's really difficult to say whether it's going to be a breakaway because you, you don't really know the style of the teams and how they want to race, if they want to bring it down to a field sprint or produce a breakaway. Um, so that will be a different dynamic to, to you know, on, on trying to figure out as the race goes on how this is going to play out. So I think it's going to be quite interesting. Perfect. 
All right, that was Emil Abraham hearing from him on what we could expect from his perspective for tonight's first big race of the season down here in the southeast. Got a little bit of a change in situation already, though, as we see uh, just a small group starting to form up at the front of the field. And one of the riders we're looking at is Riley Reitzman that was in this mix. Riley Reitzman, uh, at in, is he over there? Yeah, Riley Reitzman's now not part of this anymore. And we've now seen a shift once again. Multiple shifts occurring quickly, starting to indicate the snapping of the field. And there's some full gas. There is Brian Gomez. He is looking mean. Look at that. <laughs> he's all in. He's got, he's got Rodriguez Gomez with him. That's their guy. So Gomez is going to put in one of these efforts that's just basically going to put him on the edge of getting himself dropped. Okay. You know, he's he's, he's going to drive this thing out as far as he can without dropping himself so he can still be an ally to Gomez. Now we got... Um, Simon Daniels there as well with, I believe... Is it Roderick Oscondia-Diaz? Yes, and another strong, but you can... Body language, facial expressions tell me that he's kind of on the, on the limit. Um, but, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what his take is in the next lap and then how Simon Daniels reads his, his situation with Gomez and... Uh, Rodriguez there. This is really good for Rainstorm Racing as far as getting Alfredo protected and isolating himself away from the rest. But Simon Daniels is definitely going to be one of your men to watch. We had him as a pick on the call up this week for top five overall, and he's now proving that he could be worth that pick as he starts to wind himself up here. Uh, he's helping to create this separation, and once we see Brian Gomez back on the front, we will see that pace lift one more time, all in favor of Alfredo Rodriguez, who is on his wheel. These guys want a gap. They do not want a lot of uh, other riders in this move with them. They, Rodriguez wants to push hard. He wants to establish and just dig deep, as Daniel was talking about just moments ago. He wants to almost drop himself out of this break, but the rule number one of a breakaway is don't get dropped, and so he's going to do what he can to establish the gap and then protect it for his teammate, Alfredo Rodriguez, who is now on the front. Yeah, now that we see in the, in the background, Garrison chasing. And these guys got to just keep it you know, at a hard pace. It really tests the fortitude of, you know, who's, who in the field really wants to be a part of this um, you know, really, Rainstorm has moved to the front with Kyle Perry, Summerhill, Hernandez, all keeping tabs at the front of the race. That way, if there's anybody that turns around, they see a Rainstorm guy and is kind of thwarted from, from attacking. Ty Magner in the blue helmet, there's about 20 guys back. You know, he's just seeing how it plays out. You know, is, that, is this gap going to come back uh, because the breakaway just kind of comes apart a little bit? Or are these ones and twosies really committed to, to bringing it back, you know? Cliff missed it, right? That's an ally uh, that needs to be a part of this race. Uh, really, um, Atl Atlanta Rise, we have Garrison, we have Gage Hecht, right, has, has still kind of missed uh, this potential breakaway. So Ty is definitely kind of keeping tabs and looking at, you know, th this situation as a potential ally of who who could be there um, to, to follow. Also, work hard, be humble. Uh, Anthony Serrano is right there, who has been, you know, quite active and, and present in a lot of moves as, as well. Connor Mulevery now taking over the pace, setting Will Harden right behind him, but Danny Summerhill marking that, I believe. And so we'll see what happens here. Now these boys initially putting in big digs. And look at that, Summy is now backing out the group, and Harden is going to try to pop across. Garrison's going to try to go after it, and Summy is going to respond to that. So a little bit of dynamics playing the case, but Danny Summerhill comes out of turn one, and, and he didn't pull a fistful of break, but just he just sort it. of eased up. Yep. Yeah, no, totally, and it's um, it, it's part of the game, and as long as it's predictable and smooth, right, it's just the, it becomes frustrating, right, when you guys are working and keeping momentum, uh, momentum um, and you're able to take that away from them. So it looks like the field is, is flat, you know, a couple of these guys that are wanting the chase have been quite active, right? Garrison is seems unsure, not that he's tired, but he's unsure on exactly what, what to do and how to fully commit. Um, it's same with the other guys. Everybody's just kind of like a little unsure. Rain has really put themselves in a great position to follow stuff and again thwart people from really doing doing too much. And there's not a lot of time left in this race, right? 30 and minutes? Yeah, it's still a good amount of time. Well, we've already done the midway preem though, right? So like we're definitely through and through the halfway point, yeah. according to the officials. So 
You know, I think that there's going to be a little bit of last gasp effort here by the field to try to roll this back. And it looks like I wonder if uh, any of the other field riders are going to do this. This is Garrison one more time. Coming across solo. I mean, he timed it, timed it well for everything to stabilize, right? Mm -hmm. he's, he's no longer having to race Gomez in blowing out the gap, right? And if Gomez is going 60K an hour, to get there, you got to go 65, 70K an hour. That's like basically impossible. You've got to wait for that breakaway to stabilize in its pace, you know, so that way when you do go, you're riding faster than the breakaway to, get, to actually get there. Um, and then, yeah, Riley um, as well coming back back up um, to get himself a part of that move that he was originally part of and just kind of missed that split yeah. um, showing. So that is Riley Reitzman coming across? Uh, yeah, we just went by okay. uh, in the gray helmet there. He was, if you remember Gateway Cup last year, uh, my live stream product, there was a moment in that race where I was like, we're going 300 watts, 400 watts, 500 watts, 600 watts. What, what is going, who is doing this and why? It was Riley Reitzman, wow. <laughs> you know, um, just doing these, these crazy pulls during that race and um, sometimes when you're a guy like that, you just have to make yourself known, right? We, we talked to Craven earlier for the call up, and you know he's like, "How do we, how do guys get on his team?" He's like, "Go make out a great impression." Now what Riley needs to do is go meet Tom Craven, shake his hand, say hi, introduce yourself, and, and continue racing like this in a in a positive way. And that way, he could have a really fruitful conversation in September with, with Craven to back up his racing, you know. Um, but Garrison going across solo is just. Unreal, but smoothly, yeah. really smoothly. And you saw him like coasting a little bit into three just to catch his breath. And there he is, nice and easy on the pedals and now making contact. He does, he looks so collected in his efforts. And yep. whew, man, that's dangerous. Here's Reitzman now coming out of turn two, but he's got a field right there. Yeah, and it definitely puts Reitzman in like a tough spot of just uh, petering out halfway. <laughs> it's like brutal once you get to that. It, and it's also bad for the breakaway because if he just stalls there, it gives the field a carrot to be like, oh, that's not the full breakaway, it's halfway. I, I could at least get there. Yeah. And if they get there, they're they're halfway to, you know, the breakaway. So, um, yeah, for the breakaway, they want that guy to either get there or just die, <laughs> please. Yeah. <laughs> And the field is like, stay right there, <laughs> please. Like, we need a carrot. The small teams need something to keep them motivated. But Garrison right to the front um, to, to put pace on. Again, he doesn't, it, you know, we talked about on the call up, he doesn't want a field sprint. Right. Could, could he kick well in a field sprint? Probably. But his best odds are, are not there. So. so Kingdom Racing on the front right now, trying to uh, bring this back for some reason. Um, who's their sprinter? I, I don't. I don't know if they have one, right? We, it's the first time we saw them in the race. It took them 50 minutes to get to the front front of this thing and, and participate, um, you know, which is which is not ideal um, for for any pro any program. Um, one thing we just saw a half lap ago was going up that climb. Simon Daniels reached into the radio, and you know his face did not look um, is super great, you know. But it, just because you don't look good doesn't mean you can't go good. But he's you know he's asking guys to fill in now. Um, and he's finding himself in a, in a two on one situation. Um, Could he also just be on the radio being like, I'm good? Yeah, but he just switched to turn, right? And, you know, body uh -huh. language, facial expressions, again, is not fully indicative, but look at Rain in the front of the field, oh. hardly pedaling. Right. Um, so they want they want this to they're, stick. Yeah, they're they're totally happy. They've isolated Ty Magner. He's out of the picture for for a podium. Um, just kind of is what it is. And what other potential sprinters are there? They've got the best guy in the field up the road with arguably one of the best lead out guys in the country with him. <laughs> Why would you, and there's six of them. They, you know, they've got 33% of this breakaway yeah. in, in a very meaningful way. So they're they're quite happy. You know, Magner has seemingly chilled out. He's in the back 20. Um, He's sort of like, all right, this is, this is set. Like from Ty, we're saying that the break is gonna stick. Yeah, and yeah, this is him kind of, um, Agree, agreeing with that. I mean, I would love to see him give one more crack, popping around 25th wheel, wait for that moment, and just do a big, you know, Hail Mary and, and try to get across solo or, you know, one or two other guys and just put himself in the race. Mm -hmm. At least he you know, tries. Right now, it seems like he's kind of succumbed to the situation.
You see the guys, as they come through the start finish, we do have a big LED screen behind us and the riders are looking up at it to see what the gap may be. There's no real interval clock on it, but they can at least see the distance and uh, the distance is significant as they come through. Now, this is Simon Daniels popping off the back. Is Daniels having a hard time? And as he comes through, so uh, Garrison pulling through there, but the gaps, the Garrison is, per, is putting there are in purpose, whereas it looks like Daniels is now starting to skip pulls. So the big strong man from Belgium starting to crack a wee bit in the breakaway. So Garrison now, uh, Daniels on the back, trying to get himself back on to check and look at this. Daniels is about looking like he may actually get dropped from the breakaway. Oh man. Yeah, Garrison is just laying laying waste right now. And we've just seen nine nine to go on the lap counter. All right, we're going to nine to go on the lap counter here shortly as we are in a race against the sun. So Butcher Box, if they, whoever's on the radio needs to be telling, you know, Simon that he's got one guy behind him. Look for, you know, he's got coast a little bit. Take a breather. He's got Riley Reitzman right there to, to work with moving forward. Um, you know, take take that drink of water. Re recover he's got a guy to work with that he's not he's out of the breakaway right but they're not out of going back to the field okay you know he's he's got a compatriot right behind him to to try to work together share I, some rest but i think um, he pulled the pin man look at that yeah Oof, utter defeat but then where's butcher box butcher box needs to be yeah. lined up there needs to be somebody you they know one covering guy his here but he's not like hitting it to try to get back and just like hit the hit the alarms because in nine to go at these speeds, they need to actually start to work, like start sacrificing themselves completely. Yeah, yeah. You know, take, you know, take one guy for three, three and a half laps. You know, be like, hey, dude, we need you to end your race in three laps to to reset this race for whether it's Jeanette or Peter um, in that program. But seemingly, there's nobody, nobody there backing up Simon um, in in a mean meaningful way, very quickly. Um, and yeah, we see. Magner back in the the bottom five wheels, um, and and now Riley Reitzman is, is seemed to kind of ended you know ended his chase. Body language of Garrison as he comes through the start finish line is absolute commitment. He wants this breakaway to stick, and he is now pushing hard. Remember, he was goofing off earlier at the photographers whatnot. His upper body is now fully committed to being arrow on the upper hoods of the bars as he comes through the start finish line. He wants this gap to balloon out as much as possible, knowing we've got eight laps to go in the finish here. And Garrison now may be the uh, compatriot to Rainstorm Racing to try to help them keep that gap alive. So you're Odd man out becomes Rodriguez Ascunga Diaz. So we just got, you know, time split 18 seconds. It's it's there. It's like on the cusp. If there was a couple guys in the field that just went full ham, full bananas, this this thing would, would come back. Because, you know, Garrison needs a little bit of time to recover. The rain guys need a little bit of moment to reset as well. Um, and so if there's some real commitment from the back to the field, there's there's a chance for, for this reset. Um, but they have to do it relatively quickly before Garrison gets some wind or Gomez gets some wind back in their sails to finish thing, finish this thing out. Um, yeah, I mean, but just by time alone, I mean, lap times are being pretty quick. It's two seconds a lap, you know, which is not, not unreasonable, you know, especially on the what, course with the hill. What's he doing, though? Now he's sitting up and putting his sunnies on his head. He's going to um, lose that race. But I think, you know, Garrison has got to take a couple laps to chill, but give himself enough time to take a couple hard cracks um, at Gomez and, and Rodriguez to see if he can't, you know, wear one of those guys out, um, or particular Gomez, and, and get himself into smaller smaller numbers. I think he's got the motor to take a couple really, really strong cracks and um, either drop um, Rodriguez or, you know, potentially Gomez out of this thing and make it a one-on-one -on -one situation with, uh, you know, Rodriguez in the last couple laps. I think that's his, his best chances. He's got to take some recovery um, and then start playing some aggressive hardball. I'm confused. It looks to me like the breakaway's body language is, like, not fully convinced that they've got it or something, but or the, is that the inverse of their body language? They actually think they're fully are safe, and so they're easing up a bit. No, they have to take some respite. They have to come up. You know, they they 
they went hard. I mean, uh, watching Rodriguez's face and body language, he was participating in the pacemaking, um, or not even pacemaking, the, the acceleration of the group to get it out to this. Um, you know, it just wasn't a free ride for him to, to on the work of Gomez and, and the others. Um, so they also need um, a calculated break, respite, to come off the, the pedals a little bit. And that's, you know, what we're seeing. I don't think they're fully confident, you know, yet that it's going to be then it's going to stick again any course with a hill things can change you know quite quickly compared to a a, a flat course so um they're not in the clear quite yet um with the, with the current gap okay right now we're seeing uh, uh, another sprint lap coming up and this is for usa crits points only 10 points for the winner of the lap seven five three and two on down and for the overall results so you know, we're looking at a very interesting situation where Rainstorm is uh, certainly committed to the USA Crit Series, so maybe they go for it, but ultimately they're, the win is worth a lot more than this intermediate sprint. And so perhaps they just bide their time and just roll through at this juncture. We'll see what the dynamic is from the field, but these guys now checking their shoulders, seeing where they're at. These guys are collecting themselves for the finale Looking at the final six laps of the USA Crits opener for the season here at Sunny King Criterium in Anniston, Alabama. 18 second gap right now for your leaders and here uh, being led by Brian Gomez, Alfredo Rodriguez, uh, Diaz, Rod Roderick Escunga Diaz and Michael uh, Garrison. Here come the boys as they roll, roll themselves through the start finish line. They will collect USA crits points as they do so. There it is. 10, 7, 5, and 3 are awarded at the line. It looks like Butcher Box will take two as they try to bring this back. They may have waited a little bit, but well, we'll see. Two seconds a lap, you said before. Yeah, those at 18 seconds, right? So. Yeah you know that they need nine nine laps so at this point it's becoming four seconds a lap five seconds a lap it's, you know now becoming unreasonable uh, an unreasonable ask um and but butcher boxes they're not necessarily organized but to be fair uh, other teams aren't either we were just highlighting butcher box because they had simon daniels in the breakaway and then didn't necessarily work to to pull that back um, yeah, and, and what they got wrong there in that situation unlike rainstorm is rainstorm stayed at the front of the race mm. they weren't like oh we got our two best guys and you know we'll go back to 40th and, and hang out they stayed attentive at the front of the race to to do their job to protect that breakaway butcher box didn't do that butcher box didn't keep at least one guy in the top 10 to monitor anything um uh, to protect simon or be there in a situation where if they get the radio message hey guys my legs are dead that they could just start riding again start you know bring that bring that break break back and then almost ask Daniels to continue to pull through but when he pulls through like hey slow the break down we're chasing you slow the break down not let it get to a point where like hey guys have been dropped come to the front right and then they're out of the position it takes them five laps five laps to get to the front to, to do anything it's it's all all for naught this could be John Brock uh, uh, or no, excuse me actually this is gonna be a outlaw so with Kyle Perry yeah, Kyle's trying to get there. Get an ID. It's number 34 as he comes through. So that's going to be Luke Fetzer. Fetzer of... Uh, it's Luke Fetzer. My goodness, that that boy's good. He uh, had a very good tour of Labidibi last year when he was on the national team. Uh, so Fetzer now apparently racing for Williams Racing with the Outlaws. That's a good pickup there by uh, Justin Williams to grab Luke Fetzer off of hot tubes for that. Uh, we'll see a lot more of him this season, I'm sure. As we come into the final uh, kicks here, we're going to be looking at four laps to go right now. Four laps remaining in tonight's contest at the Sun and King Criterium in Anniston, Alabama. First race of the USA Crit Series. Uh, we have about 15 to 18 seconds for our breakaway and uh, the rest of the field starting to come apart even as they are getting into the final four laps of tonight's race. Also in a race against the clock as we are getting our boys to the finish line before the sun goes down. 
And so as we come around turn number four here with the field up at the start finish line, we have our leaders as they come through and they're about to see three laps to go. Garrison now leading it through in second wheel will be uh, Roderick Ascongay Diaz and Rainstorm Racing right behind with Brian Gomez and the fourth wheel is last year's uh, second place finisher, Alfredo Rodriguez. Now, Rodriguez has won this race before. He certainly knows how to do it, and so we will be looking to him to see whether or not he can uh, get himself back on the top step tonight with a fresh team. And what I didn't see, what I would have really liked to see from Garrison is, with five to go, try something. La launch, launch one really good one. And, and see what happens. See if you, you know, can crack Gomez, you know, yeah. enough. Um, I think to shatter can, the break. Yeah, see, it, and yeah, I think he, so gap is at 15 seconds. It hasn't gone out. It's actually come back a little bit um, yeah. as the, the break is finding that sweet spot of how hard they just need to ride and then the, the fluctuations uh, from, from the group, but still, not a ton of organization from any one team. You know, the cliff is not lining up. The rest of Rainstorm isn't lining up. Butcher Box is not lining up. Kingdom isn't lining up. Um, so it's, nothing's actually quite stabilized in any, in any one way. Um, but. Yeah, so I think this may uh, may stick as we come into two laps to go now. Two laps remaining uh, for your leaders and the gap staying or expanding even on the final kicks. So we'll be interested to see who goes for the rest of the prize money on the line here tonight in at the Sunny King Criterium in Anniston, Alabama. Here's your boys and here comes some of their first premises of our lead out as we see Brian Gomez on the front. These guys have to go late in this because they only have so many of them in order to uh, preserve themselves. And Rodriguez is trying to sit at the uh, back of the field, the back of the break here to try to preserve himself. And this is your man number 43, Brian Gomez with Rodriguez on the front though. So Gomez, interestingly enough, taking the, the back with two laps to go, Rodriguez. And this is where time could disappear from a, a breakaway really quickly. They spread across the road that looked like that and then there's some momentum and, and hard charge from the field. All of a sudden, eight seconds can evaporate and now it's 10 seconds. It's closer for maybe some ones and twos to be like, oh, that's that's strikeable. That's within reach. That's when a guy like Magner, if he's there, could be really dangerous to be like, ooh, that's touchable. Yeah. I'm, I'm willing to just go all in for just Garrison one lap and, and catch some people off guard so they can't still you know play around too much because again it, that, that gap can evaporate really quickly it goes real quick real fast i do think i think i see ty is second to last wheel in the field though so uh we're going to be looking at this break as they come around there's going to one lap to go one lap to go here tonight the officials ringing that bell here on the start finish line one lap to go and your leaders coming through and here comes your field. They're looking for still about a 15 a second gap. Leaders now all four together. In the green is Michael Garrison. In yellow second wheel there is Brian Gomez. Third wheel is Alfredo uh, Rodriguez, both in yellow. And fourth wheel there is going to be Roderick Ascunga Diaz in the white. These guys are looking at each other. This gap can evaporate very quickly. They've got to be cautious here. Garrison's gone too far back. He can't let the rider in between him and Rodriguez. He has to be on Rodriguez going into the, the final two corners. He's That's too much ground to make up for yeah. a guy like that. He's almost overly confident in his ability to yeah. come around. There's a kick. These guys are attacking into three. Balls move here as he got, oh my goodness, as he goes, Unexpected. as he dives into three. That's a Scunda, uh, Roderick Ascunda Diaz as he comes out of the saddle, but very quickly Rainstorm right onto the draft. This is becoming the lead out for Rainstorm Racing as Alfredo Rodriguez is there, and it looks like he may be leading out Brian Gomez. These guys now kicking to the line. Ascunda Diaz trying to get there. Mechanical. Garrison unable to go. On uh, Garrison having a mechanical, unable to sprint. This is going to be Rainstorm Racing going one, two here tonight. The boy Boys at the front, and they celebrate on time this year, securing themselves the win overall, going one-two here tonight at Sunny King Criteria. And I think Summerhill picking up fifth with Ty Magner, or no, it looks like Luke Fretz uh, from the Outlaws right after him. But 
Rainstorm Racing, a, a perfect, perfect race for them, um, isolating all the competition that they really need to, uh, to isolate um, and going out and doing it in a big way. So Alfredo Rodriguez getting his redemption, getting the win here this year. Brian Gomez in second. Great move there, diving into three by Rodrigo Gascunga Diaz. In third, Michael Garrison having a mechanical on the final kick to the line and unable to sprint, but still holding on for fourth. And Danny Summerhill taking the field sprint for fifth. Overall great night of racing here for your Rainstorm Racing crew in the new yellow kits. Congratulations to them and congratulations to all the men here tonight for a great night of racing. Looking at you guys just talking to each other, congratulating each other. Rodriguez, Gomez, and Diaz, Diaz. Your top three. Nick Cote holding on for six. That's a good result there for Butcher Box, but also for Nick himself as he comes up through the rank. Our Quebecois getting himself into the mix, but Alfredo Rodriguez brings it back after missing out by. A tire with last year to Cade Bickmore. He makes good on his return to Sonny King. He was perfectly shepherded through this race by so Brian Gomez. Out. And uh, these guys did a great job getting themselves into these great positions. We're going to have a look at how this race played out, starting from the beginning and getting ourselves to the finish here. All right, we're going to. And here we are at the beginning of the night for our professional men. 110 started on the line. A great night of racing overall. David Gutenplan waving to the crowd as he dives into turn number one. Gage Hecht was an early animator of this race for Velocious Racing. Great job by Gage to put it all out there on the line. We had an early crash in the first five minutes of the race that saw sprinter Cesar Marte really take the brunt of that crash going down. And I'm not sure if he ever returned to the event. We returned into racing action shortly with uh, a few splits that occurred throughout the night. Rainstorm racing in yellow was also always very attentive, but so was Butcher Box and Riley Reitzman as well for our, for those teams. These guys looking at through and through. Simon Daniels was an early instigator of what became the part of the winning break. This is our winning break being initially established that included Simon Daniels for Butcher Box Racing. Michael Garrison also there as he bridged himself across solo. Shortly thereafter, Simon Daniels gets dropped from the break, making this a move of four, but in the final kick to the line, Rainstorm Racing clearly separating themselves from the rest, going one, two here tonight. And Alfredo Rodriguez and Brian Gomez lift their arms in celebration, taking the win here tonight and celebrating for Rainstorm Racing. And our final result standings for the evening. Rodriguez confirmed as your winner of the night. Gomez in second. Roderick Escunga Diaz for MC Cycling Team in third. Michael Garrison holds on for fourth. And Danny Summerhill takes the field sprint for fifth, giving Rainstorm Racing first, second, and fifth in the top five. Overall, a great night of racing with Kyle Tesler, Nick Cote, Aboto, uh, Rafael Ramos Vargas for CRCA Foundation, Lionel Rodriguez in ninth, and Simon Daniels recovers his effort and finishes out in 10th. Great night of racing here at Sunny King Criterium. The wind has died down, the sun is setting. We thank you guys for tuning in, but don't go anywhere. We're gonna have a podium presentation for you after this short commercial break from our supporters here at the Sunny King Criterium. We'll see you after this commercial break. What's it like having ultra fast, reliable internet from Sparklight? It's like scrolling to the end of the internet and back at warp speed and finding out you just won gold at the World Scrolling Tournament of Champions or streaming in 4K on multiple devices all at once. That's amazing internet. 
And now, Sparklight is offering ultra-fast, reliable internet for just $34.95 a month for 12 months. Get 300 meg internet with unlimited data and a 12-month price lock guarantee. Equipment included. Call or visit sparklight.com slash savings. Sparklight, a new breed in high speed. Sunny King Automotive Group is celebrating 100 years in Aniston. Please join us in marking our centennial anniversary in our hometown. From all of us at Sunny King Ford, Sunny King Honda, and Sunny King Toyota, we thank you for 100 years, and we look forward to many, many more. Sunny King Automotive Group, serving Greater Calhoun County since 1922. All right, we're back here at the Sunny King Criterion. Big thanks to Sparklight for uh, supporting us here with all the things that they do to make this event possible. <laughs> we're gonna uh, bring Kendall Ryan into the booth here. We're gonna get our chairs around. Uh, talk to our winner of the women's race here tonight. All right, we've got everybody here. It's gonna be a All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you guys, thank you for joining us here tonight. I'm Gabe Lloyd alongside Daniel Holloway. And we've now have Kendall Ryan, our uh, women's race winner okay. here tonight. Kendall, uh, just briefly talk us through what that dynamic was like tonight in that uh, field. You know, you raced, I mean, we never saw you at all. So, uh, <laughs> but what was going on for you out there? Um, yeah, Alexis and I just tried to share the work as best we could. Um, I covered a few moves, but it was really just try to follow and keep it together. Um, use as least amount of energy as possible just to have a, a good punt at the end. Um, and yeah, the race was pretty, pretty aggressive. Um, like they just kept, kept trying to get up the road, but um, nothing really stuck. Uh, Usually out of the first corner, they just kind of let up and not commit to the move, so just kept coming back together. Um, there was a couple moves up the road that went for, you know, a few laps, but yeah, no one really like fully committed, so it was hard to... Were you worried at all about any of those moves at any point? Um, no, not really. I mean, DNA was also looking to keep it together, so we just kind of like, like, all right, well, I think they're playing similar cards to us, so I think we're just going to... Let them close that one. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> yeah. We did. We did see uh, Harriet Owen uh, sort of marking you there. Walk us through yeah. what the final two laps were like for you guys. Were you guys trying to uh, do anything in particular, or just uh, wait as long as possible? Um, no, I knew I knew she was on my wheel. Um, but yeah, Alexis and I just uh, we kind of looked out where we had uh, Erica Lar. Looked like she was leading out for the for the sprint. But thank you, thank you, Erica. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just told Alexis kind of like her mark of where to go, where to start the sprint. Um, and yeah, she did, she's nailed it. She's Very piloted cool. us perfectly uh, to the line, so. All right, well, Kendall Ryan, congratulations on another race win. You finally be got your crown here <laughs> yeah. at Sunny King. So we'll let you go to the podium so you can get that cool. crown. Congratulations thanks, and thanks, thanks again for joining yeah, thanks us for here. Chatting. Yep. All right, so Kendall's going to jump on over to the podium here. And we're going to get that going. Our podiums are going to take place down on the street. Chad Andrews will uh, do a little bit of that MC, and we'll talk you guys through it as well. But it's a great night here of racing here in Anniston, Alabama for Sunny King Criterium. Big thanks to the Sunny King Automotive Group for all of their support for everything. Harriet Owen in third here tonight for DNA Pro Cycling, as Kendall was just elaborating on, that uh, she knew that Harriet was there trying to mark her, but uh, Alexis, her sister, was able to do the lead out and then keep on the pedals and get herself into second overall. So Alexis, now Magner, securing second this evening. And your race winner, Kendall Ryan, about to be brought up to the top step. She will finally get her crown. It, it, fun fact, she's never actually won Sunny King Criterium. She has led out two race winners in the past. Skylar Schneider has won this race with Kendall's lead out, and then Yareli Salazar won last year thanks to Kendall's lead out. This year, Kendall finally gets her race win, 
and gets her crown. Marilyn Hill presenting the winner's check and the uh, bouquet of flowers alongside the crown. And the flowers. That she will get to take back to Los Angeles and explain to TSA what this thing is. Big old champagne. That's like an F1 size champagne. They do it right here. It's the king of all crits. Yeah. Oh, they gotta open it for her though. She's gonna pop it on the on the podium. It looks complicated. This is harder than the race, I think. Most most times it is very much just like on the spot. Everyone's watching you. Yep. Yeah. She's just like she's getting there. She has very nice nails too. It's hard to like deal with the. There it is. Oh, she knows how to do it. We may get wet up here on stage with that. <laughs> it comes. She's getting it. Boom. Bah! Congratulations, ladies. Once again, your top three, Harriet Owen, Alexis Thacker, and Kendall Ryan. Kendall going to celebrate tonight uh, alongside uh, Alexis and Ty. Congratulations to all of them and Harriet Owen. will celebrate third place here tonight. Certainly not the step that she wanted, but getting on the podium here at one of America's uh, biggest races, always an accomplishment no matter uh, what team you're on. So congratulations to DNA Pro Cycling for a well-fought race. It looks like Alexis, or I'm sorry, Kendall... Now putting on a jersey. This may be the USA Crits leader Euro jersey leader, for 2024. Okay, so Kendall will be wearing the leader's jersey for the rest of Speed Week. Well, at least into the next round of Speed Week, I should say. You can go to usacrits.com if you're not already there watching this feed. And you can get all the uh, points, breakdowns, and whatnot, and then the full standings will be uploaded to the website in short order so that you all can see where everybody shakes out. Remember, all starters tonight get at least right, 50 points, so thank you for coming. You're on the scoreboard. Big thanks and to our drone pilots here tonight for their amazing Robert shots. And our men's podium. Now being brought up, Roderick Escunga Diaz. Escunga. So Escunga Diaz uh, being brought up on the third place. He put in a good effort there, diving into turn three, doing what he could, trying to play off a bit of hesitation there, but he actually became the lead out for Rain there late. Brian Gomez in second. Brian doing a bulk load of the work to establish that breakaway in the effort to secure a reduced uh, field sprint chaos for Alfredo Rodriguez. And now Alfredo Rodriguez will be coming on up to the top step. He's won this race before, but tonight was a big redemption story as he missed out on taking the win last season by sitting up too early. And he's now uh, regained his crown and championship for the Sunny King Criterium. Great start to the season as well for Rainstorm Racing. Not only did they uh, secure first and second, Danny Summerhill taking the field kick for fifth. The there they are, the Kings being crowned. Congratulations to all of them. Alfredo Rodriguez, Brian Gomez, and Roderick Escunga Dia. Let's see if uh, Ale will get this Gomez bottle correct. And your champion today, it's not looking good. Rodriguez. There it is. He figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Now, executive director of USA Prince, 
The leader's jersey for USA Crits now coming out, and that'll go to Alfredo Rodriguez, Thad Fisher, awarding that jersey. That is the, um, what is Thad's title for this right now? He's the head dude. Executive director, I think, of Executive USA director of USA Crits? I believe so. Gotcha. Executive director of USA Crits, Thad Fisher. Always the man that knows all the things, as we know him. So congratulations to Fredo Rodriguez and Rainstorm Racing for claiming the leader's jersey after the first stop of our USA Crits season. That is gonna do it, a 23rd year in the books. We wanna thank everybody here for an amazing day in Anderson, Alabama. All right, well, I believe that that will do it for the night. Oh, we're going to do an interview with Alfredo. All right, so don't go anywhere. My apologies. We got more action coming. We're going to hear from Alfredo. If he can get up here on here. So we're going to bring uh, Alfredo up, I believe. Okay, well, here we go. We're going to be short and sweet with this interview. As we know, you all have been tuning in with us all day long and watching all the action. And uh, we're going to get a few words in by Alfredo and Rainstorm Racing here before we run out of time on our coverage. Uh, if you are leaving us, big thanks for tuning in and be sure to share this feed with all of your friends so that we get more people watching bikes and liking bikes and getting ourselves uh, out to more places. Cannot do it without all your support. And thank you guys very much. Alfredo was uh, taking photo. All right, so we may not get that interview after all. As you can see, they're on the podium now doing some podium shots. And with that, we may run out of time for our broadcast. So I'd like, we're gonna see what we can do. Still seeing what we're gonna do here as we are taking down. All right, well, we're gonna see what we can do here. We may actually. All right, here we we actually did get him. Vamos, amigos. There's Alfredo Rodriguez. Look at those silver shoes. My goodness, lovely. Where are the shoes from? These one. Yeah. Where, where, whose are those? Shimano. Uh, Shimano. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> the fancy one. <laughs> hey guys, we're in the booth. I'm Gabe Lloyd alongside Daniel Holloway, and we have our race winner, Alfredo Rodriguez, here tonight. Alfredo, congratulations on your race win. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you did it. You've, you got the win back this year. Yeah, la, yeah last year was uh, really close. It was my fault, but this year we we uh, we were really excited. Yeah. To 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 try again, and. I don't know, but, uh, I think this year we have a really strong team with Gomez, uh, Tomer Hill, and, and everybody is, is, is a strong this year. Brian Gomez did a lot of work to help you get into that breakaway. How strong was Brian tonight? Oh, Brian, I think he, he, he made the, the, the old work today. Yeah. He, he was really strong. He was told me like, hey, he, 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 steady. He, take a call because I, I I was really nervous before the start <laughs> because it, this is uh, the, the first race in, in the season and I was was really uh, nervous before the start. Sure, sure. So you you were very quiet in the beginning of the race. We didn't see you much. We saw Hernandez, Summerhill, Kyle Perry, and then all of a sudden 
at the right time, you're off the front with with Brian Gomez, and and that's the breakaway. Was it was it a gut feeling? Were you reading the race? Were you talking with people? Or, you just knew to show up at the exact right time where it was one effort and you're in the breakaway. Yeah, uh, I, I was l just looking in the star. Uh, Michael told me like, hey, Alfredo called. And, uh, and I, he told me, you need to uh, uh, stay in the, in the moment. And I see Brian Gomez when he go. And I and it was like, I need to stay there. No? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Well, congratulations, Alfredo, oh, you. on your win here tonight, and you're now in the leader's jersey, and congratulations on getting your crown. Thank you. In Aniston one more Daddy, time. Thank you. Congratulations thank you. one more time. All right, you guys, we're going to wrap up our, our uh, evening here tonight at the Sunny King Criterium here in Anniston, Alabama. I'm Gabe Lloyd alongside Daniel Holloway. Please tune in to the next feed here and join us on the call-up for a wrap-up report. Thank you so much, and we'll see you at the next one.